friends. Welcome back. Welcome back. It's author Joe Holtz. Today, with zero warning, we've got a fireside chat for you. Oh, My special oh, guest. Yeah. Oh, shit. We got to mute the stream. There we go. I knew there was something I'd forgotten. Today's special guest, live podcast we do with other D Live streamers. His name, Garbanzo. Welcome, friend. Welcome. Thank you, man. Thank you. What? It's glad to be here. Well, hello, everybody. How's everyone doing? Now, I have a question for you, uh, Mr. Uh, Garbanzo. That's uh, yeah. that's off script. We'll say what we'll, we'll say. <laughs> oh, Bamba! Thank you for the ice cream. Actually, you just reminded me. I need to jump into Tidy Labs. Uh, while I appreciate any donations you guys give during the uh, live podcast, we I tend to not call them out during the podcast because it tends to derail the conversation. Um, so I do know that I truly appreciate them all, but also know that uh, I'm going to turn down the alert sound right now so that uh, we can get this show on the road. All right. And while I'm doing that, Mr. Uh, Garbanzo, um, right. let's talk about that hat. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, I, I am a pirate, you know, so I can truly appreciate pirate, you know, paraphernalia as it were. <laughs> right. Uh, but it is also Tampa Bay Buccaneers. It's a Florida football team, right? Right. Right. Ha have you, uh, are you a fan? I guess we'll just. Born, born and raised. Born and raised. Born and raised. So you're, you're a Floridian. Is that, uh, is that the correct? Yeah. Florida. The yeah, yeah Flor Floridian. Yep. Floridian. See, you didn't know I was like smart, huh? <laughs> now, what's cool is I actually got to go to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers Stadium once, and they have an actual pirate ship that fires yep. cannons when they yep. score a touchdown. Yep. If you're going to be a fan of a sports team, that is a damn good reason to be a fan of a sports <laughs> team. And we shot somebody out of a cannon for the world record for Sea of Thieves when it was released last year in that stadium. What do you, for what record? Like, uh, the 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 human human cannonball record the furthest uh, shot and for human cannonball. Do you they know how far? They, um, I I don't know off the top of my head, but I know that Sea of Thieves was hosting it in in the stadium where we have it. Wow, that's freaking awesome! All right, yeah. before we can we can get into all this fun stuff in a minute, but before <laughs> uh, Garbanzo and I completely lose track of what we're doing here, uh, we're gonna start. So uh, this is, uh, I call this Fireside Chat. It's a live podcast I do on DLive, which is a live streaming platform. And currently I only interview other DLive streamers because I want to support the DLive community. I want to help the viewers as well as new streamers understand how to stream, helpful, helpful tips, things that will hurt you, you know, uh, keys to success, et cetera, et cetera. But the very first part of the podcast is exclusively about my guests. So without further ado, um, also Garbanzo, we will be answering questions from the chat later in the podcast. So if you see yeah. questions, um, I'll take notes. You can take notes too if you see one that you want to answer later, but we'll get to all those towards the end. So if you guys are, if you hear the sound of my voice and you'd like to ask Garbanzo a question, uh, please do so towards the end. All right, question one. <laughs> your name is garbanzo it's my favorite right. bean and uh i'd like to ask you how you came up with the name what's it mean to you uh, right so um so growing up i never really had like i always had like different names for different platforms that i was on you know as a kid and uh when i was getting older i wanted something that was like like kind of like rolled off the tongue but was like different like sounded different mm. And um, I don't know, I just saw, I, I, it was honestly from like, you know, I guess like looking at my parents' pantry for lunch one day and seeing a can of garbanzos maybe. I don't even know. I really don't know, but I, I just, I chose it one day. My friends laughed at it. They thought it was, uh, they thought it was interesting, but you know, I loved it. I thought it was, you know, different. I love it. I, it made me laugh. Like the first time you came into my chat while I was streaming and started chatting, I was like, that dude's name is Garbanzo. I'm like, that's my favorite bean. And you started <laughs> laughing. I'm like, now you're my favorite bean. You know, like it's <laughs> right. fun. It's it, you're right. Like exactly what you were hoping would work, like happen, happened. 
Yeah. Everybody knows or has at least heard Garbanzo. Right. Right. So you right. have this affinity, like maybe do I know this guy? Like, do I? <laughs> have I I've seen the name. I've heard the name. Yeah. And then and then my, my buddy Poem doing a good job making a bunch of bean gifts that we have as stickers. And and it just we just ran with it. <laughs> Poem but you're talking about Poem Pecan, right? Poem Pecan, yep. What good people, man. Poem now, rowdy, rowdy in chat. Right, can can get rowdy, but uh, <laughs> love them, man. So, <laughs> second question we always ask fireside chats. It's a two part question, but I give it to you at once because generally the, these things correlate. So, right. the question is, how long have you been streaming? But also, what got you started streaming? Right. Um, well, I've been streaming since uh, March of last year. Um, I, uh, I, I guess what, what got, what, what, I, what I wanted to get, why I wanted to get in the stream was because I gained a lot. Um, I spent a lot of time, you know, after work, you know, chilling and hanging out with people and, and just gaming. And so I decided, you know, why not just be live, you know, while I do it. And so I started doing it and then, you know, I met a few people, you know, through Twitch and, you know, built a little group there. And I uh, had a lot of good friends, you know, like uh, Grevin there and Bayfiore there. And um, and uh, these two guys, these two guys, we game together all the time, you know, see Thieves mostly and in other games like that. And, and then, uh, and actually Bayfiore is the one that turned me on to DLive that got me to come over here and start hanging out with everybody here. And it was amazing. So. So how, when you started streaming, this was March of 2018, is that right? 2018, 2018 yep. Mm -hmm. And how long on have you Twitch. been? Yeah, oh, okay, I was gonna say, where you started on what platform, Twitch? Yeah, yeah, I started on Twitch in March of 2018, and um, I got affiliate by the end of April. And, uh, and then I was, on, I was on Twitch until January of this year. I think I just checked, it was like January 12th, I signed up on DLive. Wow. Okay. So you just came to, to D live. Actually, it's, it's funny because a lot of my guests, um, they showed up at D live around that December, 2018, January, 2019 timeframe, which is actually when I joined, I followed LT Zondo over from Twitch in January. Uh, so you've been on D live now, let's see, it's June. So what, at least five months, right? And what, what would you say? are the major differences between Twitch as a streaming platform, not only as the platform, but also an audience and DLive as a platform and its audience? Um, well, primarily, I think people are a lot more friendly on DLive and they're a little bit more uh, genuine. There's mm -hmm. a, I think there's a lot more genuine people on DLive. Um, also, it's also based on its size but there's less toxicity. I mean, there's still toxicity, but there's less of it. Um, you know, I still get, you know, those people with, with those troll names that come and follow me, you know, trying to get me to say their name on stream or whatever. Right. Um, and, uh, you know, those still happen here and there, but um, the rate of which they happen is a lot less. Uh, and I feel like, and I feel like the community, the Discord community, especially, you know, everybody's uh, pretty good so far. Um, up until recently, but I won't get into that, but p people have been pretty good to each other, you know, so far. Yeah. And I've, you know, I've actually heard a bit of that. Um, the D live friends and family. I mean, that's why we all showed up. That's why we're here. That's why we support each other. Right. Cause it was in the beginning, basically streamers supporting other streamers. Right. Mm -hmm. And, and now with PewDiePie coming over you know it's bringing other large streamers in we're bringing in the audience now right so the community is has grown apart there is some toxicity but i don't think it's inherent to the d live platform right i think it's some some of the new crowd coming over and maybe some of the the streamers that have been here a while losing focus right they came from other platforms they found this amazing community Everything's going well. Now there's more people that are starting to lose focus on what makes D Live special, right? That's why we're seeing some of the issues. But 
What's your opinion on that? I mean, I just think some people are maybe a little bit too uh, too confident in what they've done so far on DLive, given, you know, where we all came from, where mm-hmm. most of us came from, mm-hmm. you know? Um, so, like I said, the, the, behavior, the behavior in the beginning was great. You know, a lot of community members were very supportive, very... Uh, very humble um but lately um and it's just because of size it's just because of growth but because of that growth there's been a few people um you know who are just maybe maybe thinking they're a little bit too above the rest of us oh i see what you mean i see what you mean so and that's why and that's why the community that's why like that's what i'm saying lately the community i've seen at least within the last week between different streams um, people arguing in chats and then lately in the discord because of these changes um, people arguing in the discord and really just um, just talking nasty it was just it wasn't a sight to see you know it's not something you want to see in your platform but i know that it's it's only temporary at least i hope it's only temporary yeah and the th- like the, the whole reason that i do these fireside chats right live podcast with you is because we're trying to humanize streamers Right. It's, it's very often that most streamers and most viewers of live uh, streaming only see their favorite streamer as this tiny little square in the corner of a screen. Right. And really, the main part of the screen is a game and whatever game right. is most popular, generally speaking, in, in terms of statistically. Right. Right. So the problem becomes that our viewers no longer look at us as human beings like that have wants and needs and desires, right? Just like they do. It's more like, where are you? Where's my entertainment? You know, and it becomes almost an entitlement feeling. So what what I'm trying to do with streamers is get the viewers to understand, hey, we're real people too, right? We're not robots. We're not AI. (laughs) We're real people. We have real feelings and we're, we're genuinely trying to entertain. Right. But at the same time, sometimes we have down days. Right. Sometimes sometimes things are great, sometimes not. And we're trying to encourage that family community feel on D Live so that we right. support each other. Like if you're not online, send a message on Discord. You go, hey, are you OK? How's how's your day going? Right. Like genuinely care about each other. And, and your name definitely has popped up in those circles, right? The, the family and friends circle, people know who you are, right? People want to support you. People want to love on you and you do the same for them. And I think that's incredible. Right. right. Yeah. And that's the thing is like, I try, and I do try my best to support, like, uh, you can even ask my wife. Um, I have, um, I have an old, you know, 2013 window surface that I take around the house with me when I'm not streaming and I have D live open. I have two streams open in the split and mm-hmm. the split screen on this little tablet. And I'm literally in, you know, usually in two different streams chatting with people, you know, just trying to, just trying to be there showing support when I can, you know, especially when I'm doing chores around the house, it's easy, you know, yeah. to prop the tablet up somewhere while I'm, you know, vacuuming, folding clothes, whatever. So. Yeah, and I've actually had a number of people tell me that they play my stream in the background while they're cleaning, cooking, hanging out. I think that's cool. Yeah. I, I really like that a lot. Uh, so so when you started streaming on Twitch, it's been just over a year you've been streaming. Uh, what is it that you started streaming? What were you streaming? Um, I was mainly streaming Sea of Thieves, Rocket League, um... I mean, not much else. I mean, we I started mixing it up around May, um, but I'm, I'm mainly focused on Sea Thieves and Rocket League throughout the year. Those are my two. Sorry, your uh oh, I forgot to turn my phone off. Um, your mic, <laughs> your mic cut out there at the end. Oh no, I'm just saying I I missed, started mixing up around April, but Sea Thieves and Rocket League are the two main games that I've played up until recently. You know. Okay, and well, what so what have you been streaming recently? Um, outside of those two, um, recently I've been streaming a lot of that, uh, roller champions, but it's only available until tomorrow or the next day, and then it'll be gone for a bit. And, um, and death garden, that game is absolutely amazing. Death garden. Death garden. Yeah. I've never heard of it. What's that? What kind of gameplay is that? Um, it's by the makers of dead by daylight. It's got the similar style. It's five versus one. 
Uh, you have a hunter and five scavengers. And the premise of the game is scavengers have to run around to these nodes where there's blood being harvested and they gather blood from it. And then you deposit the blood at these spires and the hunter's running around trying to find you and, and kill you. And so the the hunter has a kill quota for the gates to be opened and the and the scavengers have a blood quota to get the gates open. And uh, either when the time runs out or either either side hits their quota, then you have, have to open the gates and try to run out. Nice. It's about get, you know, gathering as many points as you can while you're in there. And do you and prefer little, the hunter or hunted? Um, I prefer the hunted. It's a lot more fun to run from the hunter. Uh, there's like parkour in the game, plus uh, the scavengers have special abilities that they can use. Like my favorite one is um, is a cloaking ability. And I've upgraded it so much now that it lasts like four and a half seconds. Um, I can I can escape hunters really easily and, and troll them too, and also <laughs> save te- and also save teammates. Like uh, Mr. Tricky knows he was running from a hunter and I was up on a cliff above him, and I just shot down and hit him with my invisibility, and he just escaped the hunter with the invisibilities. Oh, oh! You can actually share the invisibility. Yeah, you can share all your abilities. Like there's a healer. And the healer can like shoot a downed teammate. Like if you're downed by the killer, you can shoot you from across the map with a healing dart and get you back up. Damn. Yeah. That's crazy, dude. So, <laughs> so we have to acknowledge chat for a minute because multiple people are again asking about the hat and hating on the <laughs> hat and loving on the hat. What? Why? What is it about the Tampa Bay Buccaneers that just gets people going? Uh, because they suck. <laughs> 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 oh, Chicky. Chicky is. is Chicky poo. Chicky said, I'm not wearing my Boston Scally. <laughs> That's funny, man. Hat gang. Dude, I am bearded I dude with hat normally. Uh, I just got, you know, so fresh and so clean. So I thought I'd show off the uh, the haircut. Nice. But uh, yeah, you know, I, I yeah. I'm not. I don't know what you guys expect, but I'm I'm squirrely. You know, I just do what I want. <laughs> <laughs> clearly, clearly, so does Garbanzo. He's wearing a Tampa Bay Buccaneers hat. Yep, I gotta represent where I'm from while I'm on this. Gotta. Well, I'm technically, you don't have to. Oh no, I have to. <laughs> <laughs> So, so um, we've covered what you what you like to play. What's your regularly regularly? That's not the word I was looking for. What's your regular streaming schedule? Um, I try to do Monday through Friday, uh, five p.m. to eleven p.m. Eastern. Five p.m. to eleven p.m. Monday through Friday, Eastern Standard Time. Right. Okay. Um, do you? Do you always stream gaming? Do you do you do talks? Do you do any game nights? Anything like that? Right. So, um, uh, Bayfield and I used to have a thing called Friendly Fire Fridays, where um, it was the second Friday, uh, every other Friday of um, like every I guess like a biweekly thing, and uh, we would um, we would get you know other streamers together that we knew and play like those party games like Deceit. Or or something like Dead by Daylight, and uh, and just you know have fun doing that. And then also um, uh, the Friendly Fire Fridays are kind of on hold right now. I'm sure we're going to get them rolling again in the future, um, but as of right now they're on hold. But and then Mondays I do a podcast with Wobbly Sword Wizard, um, and uh, he and I talk about games and movies, just like you know nerd stuff, comic books, um, just anything that's like hot topic. You know during that week, like we just did E3 this this past Monday. Can you put his name in chat for me? I'd like to. Uh, I'd like to check that out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so on Mondays at five p.m. Same time is that uh, the start? Yeah, yeah. We start. Yeah, we start five p.m. Eastern, so four p.m. your time. Central, right? Um, so five p.m. Monday nights, Eastern Standard Time. Garbanzo with Sword Wizard, Wobbly Sword oh, Wizard. Wobbly Sword Wizard, right? Are doing a nerdathon. <laughs> and I'm a fan. Matter of fact, he doesn't. He just. He's not going to know. You can tell him later. But I'm going to subscribe to Wobbly Sword Wizard. Uh, yeah. An offline nice. subscribe. There you go. Sweet. You know, it's funny how 
Wobbly and I met too. Uh, we met before we even like were streamers. Or he was a streamer, but he didn't tell me, and I wasn't a streamer. We met in the last day of the last Sea of Thieves beta, and we we had such a good time on the ship with him that we invited him to come play with us on the midnight release of the game. And and for us, it was three a.m. For him, it was like eight a.m. And he showed up and played with us. It was crazy. Nice, awesome dude, awesome dude. You know what I just realized? I don't think I'm subscribed to you, Garbanzo. Yeah, you are. Am I? Could be. I mean, you did subscribe. I did. I, I saw it. I, I don't think. It I think it. I think it ran away. Okay, it's back. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Thank you. There we go. Dropped wow. you a monthly sub, buddy. Oh my goodness, dude! I listen. Here's the thing. D Live as a company does not officially endorse or support live podcast right which i think is strange right i like because hello fat-headed noob does one tidy does one charles does one like why the hell would you not publicly support live podcast when you right. are in fact doing live podcast that you want people to watch right the regular their weekly community streams their q a's I don't, I don't understand that part so i've started a push myself as a live streamer to support any other live streamer I can and tell other people about them because I think look look the whole idea with live streaming is connecting with your audience right if you're not going to connect with your audience just make YouTube videos right you can skip the live chat the live <laughs> interaction but that's right, my favorite part is right like what what got you into live podcasting um, I like to talk. So <laughs> okay, okay. I mean, I, I like to talk, and people say that I have a great voice. So I thought, you know, why not do a podcast? And I originally, I originally started a podcast on on Twitch with Bayfior, um, but because of life between the two of us, we couldn't really link up as often as we wanted to. Mm. So you know, we kind of shelved it, and then um, you know, I essentially just picked it back up with Wobbly over here, just because I I really wanted to do something, and I you know, I want I wanted to you know, get rolling on it. So Wobbly wanted, it, it was weird. It happened organically. Like Wobbly and I were just chatting one night after a stream and we just, we talked for like two hours. And I was like, we could have had a podcast. Like we could have just had a podcast instead of just sitting here talking. Yeah, I agree. Well, hey, if you need, if you ever need a guest or somebody to do live podcast with, I'm in, if you, if you want. Nice. If you want. You like, you, you like movies? I love movies. As a matter of fact, awesome. my my sister has been in the LA film industry since the '90s, and my mom has been in the Utah wow. film industry for like a decade. Wow! Yep, That's I don't awesome. I don't watch television. Uh, family and, of artists, but I do love movies. And my mom actually has created when <laughs> when they took soap operas off uh, TV, which however long mm -hmm. ago that was. My mom had been watching these soap operas every day for 40 years and literally associated them like you would family. And when, mm -hmm. when they took the soap operas off television, she, her and a bunch of other people got together and said they tried, they actually petitioned to get them put back on TV. When they realized that they weren't going to do that, they started their own freaking soap opera <laughs> called, called wow. Pro, uh, Proper Manners. And they... First, it was like just a web series that they were putting on, you know, online for people. And then Netflix just picked them up. So my mom created it, like helped create with Pietro and a number of other people, you know. Yeah, right. Like, that's awesome. Dude, here, guys, follow your damn dreams, man. If you like soap Ooh, operas and they take them off TV, you could start your own soap opera and end up back on TV. That is amazing. Right. I've, awesome I'm proud as hell of my mom, Debbie Star Jackson. Matter of fact, she's on D Live. She I got her on D Live. But it's it's powerful, you know, being be like the being on the internet, being able to connect with the world audience, there's somebody available for you. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I said it on, on Super Sports tweet the other day. There's a community out there for everyone. Just gotta find it. Exactly. I'm just looking at chat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, yes. So, like I was saying, Mr. Garbanzo, uh, if you want a regular guest 
or a fill-in guest for a for a live podcast, I'm in. Yeah. And if you ever want yeah. to talk about the existential nature of reality, I'm definitely <laughs> in. <laughs> Manifesting your ideal reality, stuff like that, I'm in. Speaking into existence. Yeah, exactly. You know, exactly. Your thoughts create the possibility of your reality, but it's mm. your words and your actions that actually create it. Oh, my wife is going to love you. Uh-oh, that's probably... That's awkward. <laughs> no, I get it. I know what you mean. I know what you mean. But it's, it's very important. Like if, if little things have been proven, right? Like if you wake up in the morning, let's say you didn't sleep well, right? You didn't. And that's, I, I, that happens to me a lot because of pain. But if you wake up in the morning, regardless of how you slept and say, wow, that was great. I slept really well. It literally has an effect on how well you think think you slept, which actually has an effect on how well your body feels. Yeah, I believe it. Even if you didn't sleep well, you could tell yourself you did and it, your body agrees. It's wild. Yeah, I agree. hundred percent. Excellent. Mind over matter. All right. So again, before we get too distracted, because we can talk about the great blue yonder towards the end of this thing. <laughs> um, <laughs> I always like to do a section of the podcast where if you're a new streamer or you want to start streaming and you don't really know much about it, we like to get into a section where we try to give you tips and tricks to help you. So let's talk about when you first started streaming, Garbanzo, which was a little over a year ago on Twitch. When you first started streaming, were you, was it easy? Did you have struggles? Like, how did you learn how to actually stream? <laughs> um so getting started wasn't hard i'm in terms of like setting up a stream and actually getting it to work mm. um i i'm i'm a i'm a really quick learner and i'm a pretty tech savvy person so i just watched a couple obs videos and ran with it um and when it came to actually streaming and building like either getting people to watch or whatever it was it was really difficult um yes um what's it called they uh like just going live and trying to build like anyone to come in like i didn't understand like the networking aspect of it at first mm. like i i was kind of i was i was doing it with a couple buddies um and we really didn't like talk with anyone and um and then because this is like um this is really like 2017 <laughs> the one i'm telling you right now because we tried we tried doing it on Twitch, but I felt like my computer wasn't good enough for it. And I wasn't really networking because I didn't know. And uh, so we kind of just like shelved it. And then um, I went back to it once I actually upgraded my computer, which was that March, um, which is when I really started trying and started pushing. And then um, I met, I met Bayfjord through um, Sea of Thieves uh, and then ended up playing with him, um, you know, streaming with him a few times. And then you know, he just he just you know took me into his community and we all hung out and uh, game together and 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 streamed together. It was like like a religion. We really. were religiously all together all the time, hanging out. <laughs> so and uh, I mean, so I mean after that, just the growing the growing part was you know it was kind of like you know he was helping me out by hanging out in my streams and stuff. But I really didn't like extend outside of that. Like I didn't understand. Um, you know, that I should have, you know, got to know more people instead of just keeping it like tight knit the way I did, mm. you know, cause you know, cause I, you know, if you want to grow, you have to, you know, really like, like spread out a little bit to actually grow. You can't, you know, keep yourself confined because, you know, you'll only grow as, as much as your confinement will allow you to grow. So that's very, what I really learned on D life. Very true. So what what's what are you doing different now like what type of social media are you using i only use twitter um i'm too uh too busy with work and children and a wife to be managing multiple social network platforms and um i i fell in love with facebook and fell in love with twitter about two years ago personally so i use twitter for my um for my uh streaming channel and then, uh, but what I really learned is that is just trying to build like genuine relationships with people that I can, you know, actually hang out with, you know, and not just, not just, you know, 
technically support, so to speak, but like people that I, you know, I can message them on Discord and say, hey, you know, we're hopping on this game. You want to join us, you know, mm-hmm. and they can come over and join us as well. And that's essentially what I try to do, you know, on DLive is, you know, I'm not trying to, I try to support people, everyone that I can, you know, out of my followers that I have. Um, but I essentially try to build a deeper relationship than just sitting in your chat supporting. Mm -hmm. Like that's not my, that's not usually my end goal when I'm hanging out with you. So, you know, if I'm lurking in your stream, then I'm there supporting you because I like you. Um, but we probably don't have anything in common to connect on, you know, in terms of, you know, gaming. So, Mm. but, but if, um, but if I'm trying to game with you, it's just because I feel like, you know, we have chemistry that, you know, will work, you know, gaming wise. Sure. Actually, this, this dead by daylight is, uh, is very intriguing to me. I, I'm going to look into that when we're, uh, when we're done with this. Yeah. Cause I'm not, I'm not a huge fan of like these massive multiplayer battle royales. It's, it's, right. too, it's just too much going on for my taste. Right. But a small group of five people, six people working together, laughing, having fun, right, playing a game. That sounds that sounds good to me. Oh yeah. I mean Death Garden Death Garden can be a little a little rage inducing at times. Especially uh, when you're especially when you're trying to outrun and you think you're doing well and you just mess up or something. <laughs> it, you know. But um it's definitely a lot more forgiving. Like it's it's a it's a more forgiving type of game to where you're not really mad at it that often so it's good. well and if if you keep if you keep your focus on the game more about entertaining your audience and entertaining right. yourself and less about whether you win or lose i think that goes a long way right yeah and and like my uh my buddies and i um when we play that game like they even tell you like i i have a lot of fun just messing with the hunter so you know, usually get some entertainment out of that when you watch me just get like a lot of close calls. There was one time, that just to go off topic real quick, when I was running behind the hunter for like I don't know fifty yards before he finally realized there was another set of footsteps with him, <laughs> and I just dip into a bush and he turns around. And he's like, where, where, where go? <laughs> the hunter's being hunted. So, so again, we're, we're talking about tips and tricks, things that you've learned over the years with uh, streaming. And one thing that you said is social media, use it, Mm -hmm. pick one and, and to be, to be completely transparent on D live, if you expect to find any measure of success or be a verified partner, you're required to use other social medias to help promote yourself. They check for that. So Twitter is a great way to do it. Discord, not exactly social media, but also incredibly important for you if you want to be on DLive. Discord is a voice and chat service where you can have your own server for free. Um, you, there's also plenty of other servers. DLive has one. DLive Partners have one. DLive Global Partners, right? DLive Artists. There's all these different Discords that you can get into. And if yeah. you have a question for the staff, or Guardians, which DLive is the only platform to have volunteer uh, employees, they call them Guardians, that help moderate yeah. chat, right? Yeah. Um, you can go to Discord and hit, hit them up any time, night or day and get a response from somebody, right? It's yeah. how much, did you ever need staff or were you ever able to get a hold of staff on, uh, on Twitch? <laughs> I never tried. Okay. Never. Never, yeah, never even tried to get a hold of staff on Twitch. Never had a problem to to really need them. Actually, it's interesting though. Like when I, because I'd never live streamed before D Live, and what I noticed about D Live immediately was staff would just show up and hang out and chat with you. Right, I'd never I, heard of that before. I haven't had that. So okay, well, I mean, just just say it. Like it's yeah, it is available. No. No, no, no. I mean, I've seen, I've seen staff show up. I, the only guardian that stream is Captain Shambles, but he and I are good buddies. Like we game together. Hmm. Um, but, um, but in terms of like staff members, like you know, a bunch of my buddies would tell me about you know certain members of the community, especially that work for the work for DLF, coming to their streams. But um, I haven't had them come in. I'm not. I mean, I don't. I don't really you know care either way. I'm just. You're clearly not a troublemaker. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm not 
I'm not trying. I'm not trying to step on anyone's toes or nothing. I'm just doing me. <laughs> now, okay. So, so while we're talking about how to stream, how to be successful streaming, this a few. I saw a few people bring this up, and and if you don't mind talking about it, um, you said you you are married, correct? Um, yes, married with two children, and have two kids. How old are your kids, if you don't mind? Uh, my daughter is three, and my baby boy just turned. Actually, he's about to be five months. Wow, so real little, so three years old yeah. and a newborn, basically. Yeah, I started. I started on D Live. I had like two streams, and then my boy was born, and I was gone for like a week. <laughs> nice. So, yeah. So this is a, and if you don't mind answering this question, I like to ask, uh, what What's your first name? Uh, Josh. Now, do you mind if people call you Josh, or do you prefer Garbanzo? Or? Um, if people, yeah, they call me whatever. Um, I have I have my real name and my, you know, if people prefer to call me Josh. Um, people call me Bonzo. People call me Bean. People call me Josh. They call me whatever. You know. My favorite I, Bean. I, I have I have many names. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Okay. I answered all. <laughs> so so, Josh. Let's just let's just call you Josh for a minute. Let's get let's get personal. Uh, no, no, all right. just kidding. <laughs> all right. Change the app. How are you doing? Uh, all right. Um, no, but seriously, though, so you, you, you have a full-time job? Is that? Yes. And mm -hmm. what, what is it that you do? Do you want to talk about it? Do you like your job? I work, I work at home um, for an insurance company. I won't say what. I prefer not to. Yeah, no problem. So, so how, do you, how do you find time to, with the full family, uh, you know, wife, kids, full-time job, to stream as often as you do. Um, uh, that lady right there in your chat, Mrs. Bonzo, makes it all happen. Miss Bonzo, hey, Miss Bonzo showed up. That's fantastic. <laughs> so, so being supported by your wife is what's made it, uh, given you the time yeah. to stream. Can't do it without her. Can't do it without her. Wow. That's awesome. Well, so so if you guys are listening again, this this portion of the the podcast, we're we're basically trying to cover how to stream, how to be successful, and you know, there's there's a lot of us that have kids and that are in relationships and have you know full time jobs and things outside of streaming, and I've heard multiple answers to this question. Consistency is a word that people like to use a lot, but. It, it's hard to be consistent when you have the job, when you have a marriage, when you have kids, right? So, so when you're doing this day in and day out, do you, are there concessions being made to, to give you that time? Or have you just developed um, a pattern that works for you that allows you to be consistent with streaming? Um, yeah, well, at first it was, it was rough uh, based on where we lived before. Um, but now, um, based on her work schedule and my work schedule, me working from home, um, you know, she she's able to, like, I drop the kids off in the morning. She picks them up in the afternoon. You know, she brings them home. I'll stop streaming for just a second, like, just, you know, go away to help her, you know, bring them in if they're asleep because, you know, my daughter's a giant even though she's three. And, um, and so... Um, and then she, you know, she handles, you know, the nightly, the nightly duties of, you know, making sure that the baby's fed and they're both in bed while I'm here streaming. Yeah, that's, I mean, for anybody that doesn't have kids, to have a three-year-old is difficult. To have a yeah. three-year-old and a newborn is <laughs> even more difficult. <laughs> yes, yes. Very, very challenging. But that's, yeah. how important is it? And this isn't about you specifically, but you have this knowledge. So how, how important is it to have the support of your family to be a streamer? Extremely. Extremely. If you don't have, if you don't have your family support, you're going you're gonna to be hurting in both areas. Hmm. And, and do you find it's equally as important? Like I noticed you said you stream Monday through Friday. Mm -hmm. um, is the weekend's family time? Um, yeah, so I was trying to find a stream schedule that really worked for me. And I was, I was doing, I was doing Sundays off and Wednesdays off. Um, but Saturdays have been really dull for me. Like, it's just not a good night for me to be streaming. Hmm. So, um, I would, I switched it from Saturday to Wednesday just to see, and I had more success. 
you know, in viewership, you know, more attendance uh, during the week. So I'm like, well, if my attendance is better during the week than it is on the weekends, then I'll just take the weekends off and I'll stream during the week. And then, and then, yeah, I, since I have weekends off from my job, I spend the weekend, you know, with my family, you know, mm. doing whatever we can. And being in Florida, we have a lot we can do. So, oh, yeah, you're all these Florida plugs. It's okay, you know, if you, if you want to love Florida, that's fine. Somebody has to, <laughs> all right? But the rest of us know better and have escaped the clutches of Florida. Escaped. Escaped. Escape? I escaped Florida as a child. I escaped Florida as an adult. Escaped. Tampa escaped. too. I was in Tampa, just so you know. And uh you know best city in the whole state. The best thing that ever came out of Florida was the Mannheim Steamroller band. You know about them? Listen, man, I live, <laughs> I live where people I live where people vacation. Okay. <laughs> where people people dream. People dream of going to Disney at least once in their lives, and my wife and I have passes. We're very spoiled. Okay, okay. Very spoiled. Okay. I mean, We're you know, spoiled. whatever you got to tell yourself, you know, to... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I like it. I like it. Oh, nothing. Not a lot of people, not a lot of people like Florida. And yes, a lot of people who are born in Florida don't like Florida, but I do. Um, having the beaches as close as they are, having the theme parks we have um, are... We have tons. We have tons of uh, you know great restaurants and franchises that are here in the area, and then the area that I live specifically is just booming in terms of nice. growth. So we're going to be implementing um, a diamond dinner section pretty soon, um, which is I think going to be the second or the third uh, one of its kind in the in the nation. So a diamond. That's how, that's how busy we are. Say that again. A diamond dinner section. In a, Inner intersection, a diamond intersection where it'll allow cars to get on and off an interstate without having to stop at a light. Oh wow! Yeah, I'd never heard of that. That's fancy. So, so question: Have you ever heard of Plant City, Florida? Yeah, yeah, Plant City, very, very familiar. So, the the soap opera that my mom helped create is about yeah. plant. It's based on Plant City, Florida. <laughs> like not only Pietro, some like oh. some of the creators are from Plant City. My sister in law's family are from Plant City and still live there. So we were it was super awesome that you know when my mom met these the other co creators of the show, they never met before, but they immediately could talk about Florida and Plant City in particular. That's funny. It's awesome. That's real funny. And yeah. it's 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 about how dysfunctional it is, just so you know. Yeah, yeah. Just so you know. Proper manners. Yeah. And they, the play on words, manners, is about like uh, a large house, a manor. But obviously play on words being proper manners because nobody in the show acts right. They're all a bunch of backstabbing yeah. crazy people. Yeah. Yeah. Like Florida, in general. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Except Garbanzo. Listen. Except Garbanzo. Listen. Listen, Newport Ritchie, Plant City, Port Ritchie, those areas we don't talk about. Dade City, we don't talk about. <laughs> Even we, we, those, those are going to be cut off when we can. We, we can figure out how to cut them out and then just push them into the Gulf. We'll, we'll do it. Dude, don't you worry. you raise sea level by a foot, you're losing half the state. Shoo. We're we're below sea level. We're we're like 15 inches below. Like right now, like we just need a push. It's a slight <laughs> push, and we're done. <laughs> Hopefully, you have a boat. Um, I do not, but um, I'll just sit on my roof and just wait. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Florida. All right, so so we've gotten a little bit off the rails, but uh, that's okay. Bit. It's okay. It's okay. So uh, so this is another very very important question. I think equally as important as um, how to be successful, which I haven't asked you that yet. That's coming up. We talked about a right. few details, but let's first ask. What are some things that you did in the past streaming that just don't work, either because of the family, because of the job, because streaming? And how did you change it to, to be more successful, right? Like, what doesn't work as a streamer? Um, well, this, one, this one's tough because it, it was a primary issue. But streaming in the main living area of your home, mm. while, you, while you have a child running around, at that point was a two-year-old. 
uh, running around, you know, trying to play and be loud and, you know, and, and so um, I was streaming right in the corner of my living room, right next to the living room couch where the TV was, you know, my wife, you know, trying to, you know, get dinner ready, my daughter running around being loud. So, you know, my stream would hear constantly, you know, mm. dishes clanging and, and my daughter screaming. And um, so that was always, that was always tough you know, to try to have at least, you know, a, you know, consistent, you know, silence, at least, you know, where I'm just talking and not a lot of background noise going on. Um, so moving, you know, we, we moved and we moved into a bigger home where we had a room where I could have an office for work and for streaming. Uh, and so I just set up both my desks and now I have the privacy to lock a door. So that way, you know, it's dead silence and, you know, not a lot of background noise, dog barking, you don't hear that and or anything. So that's a huge that was a huge thing that was that I was struggling with mm. in the beginning. Yeah, that's so actually tried everything. It's cool because I haven't had anybody give me that answer specifically, right? Um, right. It is incredibly important that you can control your sound environment as a streamer. Right. Right, and there's multiple ways to do it. Like you're like you're saying, obviously not being in the main living space, right? Have a dedicated right. office corner of the bedroom, something where you can shut the door and maintain your sound environment. Yeah, you know, unless you're a bachelor and you have the whole place to yourself, do whatever you want. <laughs> yeah, then you could set up in front of the fireplace and have live podcasts. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, sorry, that was, yeah. But uh, the other thing you can do to help control your sound environment, guys, is you could put what are called sound gates on your microphone in OBS right? OBS studios, what a lot of us use to stream. And you can actually set distance from the mic that you'll pick up a sound, but also which sound range. And I'm not an audiophile, right? But I have started using sound gates. And depending on the stream, I cannot wear my headset. I can have the, the audio coming through the desktop speakers, and you still can't hear it in the mic, which is only like two feet away. Oh, I've never, I've never been able to get anything like that to work. That's amazing. I could help you figure that out after we're done here, if you want. I could tell you what settings I use in OBS and help you do it. So, okay, so that's that's one thing that he says doesn't work. You can't set up in the main living area, and it's true. Nobody wants to hear your child cry. Nobody wants to hear your dog bark. Right, as much as you love them, and we probably love them if we know them, it's. The thing about good entertainment is it takes you out of your current reality, right? It's called the suspension of disbelief. So a good stream, I can come into your stream, forget about the world and be entertained. Dogs barking, right. babies crying, dishes clanking, that takes you out of that sound environment, right? So right. that's a really great point. Okay, so how about this? What is it that you found over the last year plus as streaming that works? That you would say, hey, if you're going to be a streamer, do these things or do this thing. Um, network. <laughs> Networking. Yeah, yeah, it's it's the biggest lesson that I've learned in the year and a half that I've been doing is networking. Um, getting you know, getting to know getting to know other people that have the same interests as you. Um, giving you know, getting to know other people you know around the platform. You know, maybe getting involved in a community group, you know, if there's a that you're, you know, attracted to, you know, things like that, you know, you don't want to, you don't want to, you don't want to, like I said earlier, you don't want to confine yourself, you know, because if you, if you confine yourself, you don't really reach out and you don't really support others. Um, it's going to be hard, you know, to get eyes on you. So, you know. so what, when you say networking, what, what does that mean to you? What is it that you're actually doing? Because it's it's easy to say, well, you got to network and then move on. But for somebody that doesn't know what that means or what that looks like in terms of live streaming, could you explain it? Um, I mean, like I said, getting to know people, like actually, actually genuinely, genuinely getting to know others and expanding your social circle. You know, don't don't try to just you know throw Lino at people, you know, and hope that you know, they're going to come and see you, but, you know, sit and talk and get to know the person and mm. actually see if there's somebody that, you know, one, you want to support, you know, per, like a personality wise, 
mm-hmm. um, and actually, you know, get the, you know give them a little you know reassurance that you know you're not there trying to be slick. You're you know you're there trying to be you know a genuine person who wants to you know get to know them. That's why like I don't. If you look at my followers, I think I have like less than two hundred people that I'm following because I can't one see everybody. So I'm not going to be following, you know, of 500 people. I can't see everybody. And out of the, you know, hundred and something people that I am following, I, every time I see them live on that sidebar, I'm clicking and going in and chatting and talking and just trying to let them know that I'm there. And there's, and there are a few people that I try to, you know, actually game with on a regular basis, either on stream or off stream, you know, whenever they'd like to. Mm -hmm. Uh, But, but, you know, you can't, like whenever I see somebody that has like you know seven hundred followers or a thousand, know, their, their following is like seven hundred people. Like, there's no way you can truly support that many people. Like, I don't, I don't believe it's physically possible unless that's all you do all day. Um, right. You know, so, so that's why, like, I I tell people if you see my followers, those those are the people that I'm endorsing. Those are the people that I. You know, those are people that I would watch, that I am watching, and those are people that I want to, you know, spend, you know, my time with as a streamer. So we could actually parlay that into a discussion that we get a lot, which is, how do you feel about follow for follow? I am against it. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a social tactic to gain, to hit a goal. Mm. That's what it is to me. Now, the, the literal use of the follow button is if I find somebody, and you've alluded to this, Garbanzo, which is if you find somebody who you like and whose content you enjoy, it's a way to be able to find that person again very easily when they're online, right? You, there's a following tab on DLive. You click it. Anybody that you're following that's live at that moment is going to pop up in an alphabetical list, and you can go, you can hop in and watch them. I use it all the time. But like you said, if you follow for follow or just click on everybody's name and you've got 700,000 plus following that you're following, that's just as confusing as trying to find somebody that, you know, on the main DLive page and, you know, that you've never followed before. It's just too many names, too many screens. Hold back in answering. <laughs> I agree. The thing, the thing about it is, uh, it's 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 empty. It's empty growth when you don't build. When, when you need to make connections with people to, to be successful as a streamer. If you want to be a streamer, you need to be able to connect with people. You know, you can't just be. I mean, some people just want to be in your streams for you know other reasons, but you can't just be like a, a robot. You know, that's there. You know, for the the game. So, right. <laughs> it's 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 just <laughs> it's just you know follow you know follow for follow to me like I said it's a, it's a social tactic to gain a goal. It's not it's it's not genuine. It's not it has no soul, um, and there's no connection with with the individuals. And if you say if you honestly say you're connecting with somebody when you when you click on the follow button and say please follow me back, I mean then you're just you know. <laughs> yeah, and and like so I use the follow button in two ways. One, I find you, I like you, I want to find you again, I follow. Right. Yeah. The other way is like during this this podcast we've been doing where like Grevin is in here, a few of your people that I don't know uh-huh. and and you're vouching for them like hey, you need to know these guys. They're good people like before uh, before and and uh Grevin for you specifically. I wouldn't follow uh-huh. them. Because right. I'm always looking for new people, right? New entertainers that I like or that I potentially will like, right? For, for two reasons. One, entertainment purposes. But two, I'm always looking for new guests for this fireside chat. And <laughs> so a lot of my guests I found because a previous uh, guest would vouch for them. Then I would go spend some time in their channel, get to know them, realize they're great people and, and ask right. them on the show. But uh, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see how, uh, you know, we'll see. We'll see. So- yeah, and that, that's the thing is I always, I always tell my people, like, you know, if I'm supporting someone, I would like you to support them too. And that's why when I'm streaming, I say, if you guys are looking for anybody new to watch, look at my, look at my following. 
hmm. down below. And and if you're not following someone down there, pick them and check them out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no worries, Gavin. <laughs> I did call it out. I did call it out. Yeah, and I was and I offline followed you because your boy, my favorite bean, said that you're good people. And uh and that's how it works. You know, that's I think that's a great way to follow, right? It helps you find new content from people that you already like. So there's already and they're saying that they're awesome. Odds are you probably are gonna enjoy it. Right. And <laughs> and and feel free to unfollow people. Right. If you follow somebody and then you go into the stream and they're railing or turn, you know, they went to the dark side, unfollow them. I've done it. Yeah. I'll admit it. I've unfollowed a few people on this platform already and I, I, I'm not proud of it. But there are people that I met early on that it was one it was one type of like vibe and going back and visiting them after a few times, the vibe shifted. And uh, it was just, uh, you know, I'm glad. I'm glad unfollows are silent. That's all I have to say. Yes. Oh man! By the way, thank you, D Love. Yes, we appreciate that. Unfollow is not in chat when you unfollow. Yeah. Because nobody I'm needs that. Silent. Yeah. No, yeah. we don't need that drama. Especially if you've got, <laughs> if you've got 600 people following you, you're definitely not going to notice Garbanzo missing. <laughs> <laughs> right. One bean. One bean. Nobody's. Nobody knows. <laughs> Well, so so one thing that I've actually noticed that I would that I kind of disapprove of, not kind of, mm. I disapprove of it. And I'd like to know how you feel. And I think you kind of alluded to it, but I'd like to, you know, be more specific, which is there are certain streamers that I know that I visit at least once, twice, sometimes three times a week minimum just to keep a relationship, you know. And I I generally tip very well or at least not compared to some, but I tip out all my Lino daily, the stuff I buy, the stuff I'm getting from locked in Lino rewards, the, you know, from my streams. And so I've noticed with a few streamers, I'll go in their chat, I'll tip, I'll talk, I'll hang out for hours. And then they only show up in my chat for like one comment, 30 seconds worth of interaction and donate. And it seems just to be to keep their name fresh in my mind so that I'll keep going back to their channel and, and I'll get like offline messages. Hey, I missed you, you know, this week, where have you been? You know, but they haven't been in my chat at all. Like, I kind of feel like wow. that's fishing, you know, fishing for Lino and viewers. And I don't know, I, it makes me feel uncomfortable. I, I don't really know how to say it. You know what I mean? Right. Um, Super smart. I, was, I wasn't talking about you, dude. <laughs> Uh, the one thing I have to say to that is, um, first of all, private messaging people about them not showing up to your stream, not subscribing to you, whatever the case is, is is just like, like not not the correct etiquette at all. Um, second of all, uh, I, it's hard. It's hard with what you're saying. Like if you show up to somebody's stream and then they come back to you and like you know hang out for a little bit and do it a little bit and then they're gone. It's hard to say whether or not it's genuine or not it, 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 currently because with a lot of people, everybody tries to show a little bit of love around the platform and then maybe mm -hmm. take a break, you know? Not all, not all of us sit in one stream the entire night. Like I do try to pick at least one or two people I can sit with all night, mm -hmm. especially if I'm sitting here at my PC. Um, but uh, but it's I, I feel like a lot of people they don't have the time so you know if they're not streaming they're just going to go around and show a little bit of love by you know, sprinkling a couple of lino here like hey you know have a good stream you know catch you later type of thing it's so that that's a little tougher um but i can see you know if they're private messaging you about you not showing up to their stream then that that's when it may seem like fishing at that point <clears throat> I, I can't i can't justify them just showing up for a little bit because a lot of people do it Right, um, but there's a difference between a little bit and asking me, hey, how you doing? And then not sticking around to hear the answer and not right. responding at all again about anything. Like, right. See, that's also tough because like, I've been in the situation and I, I don't know if I've done it to worst. I think I've done it to worst before. SSG I've done it to before as well, um, where I've gone in and I'll drop a diamond 
And then my wife will call me or text me to go, because I'm not streaming anymore, to go like grab the baby and feed him. And then I step away. And then I come back and they've already been like either like they'll go offline at that point or they've, mm-hmm. you know, gone on. And I'm like, you know, I'm like they missed, I missed whatever they said. And it's, I mean, it happens, you know, it yeah. happens at times like where we get pulled away. Like uh, Worst actually came into my stream one day and he dropped the ice cream on me, didn't say anything and never came back. But he had a family thing he had to take care of. Like his son, mm-hmm. his son like came into the room like, right at that moment. So. Yeah, and and to, like you said, to be fair, you know, I've like I've had thirty guests on this show. Even if I only tried to visit the guests that I've had on my show, there's still not enough time to visit thirty streams. It just isn't. So yeah. I try to pick like when I log in and look at my following tab, because that's again that's what I use it for is to find people that are live that I want to watch. I will I will scroll through the list. I will try to find a name that I haven't been in the last couple of days and 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 drop by and say hi and drop some love and f- hang out and kind of mm-hmm. refresh my mind about who the person is and what they're streaming and what the vibe is in their channel. Right? And right. like like you said, try to hang out for a while, right? Not just drop by speed like speed dating I call it. <laughs> speed, i love you speed donating yeah like i love you here's lino they go next i love you here's lino that's it's speed dating i don't i, I would rather <laughs> hang out for a while <laughs> and it's funny too. fall asleep mid combo watching a stream done that so mr tricky so it's funny tricky because a lot of people in my chat have said they'll say something they'll be hanging out like active and then all of a sudden they just go dark and two hours later, they'll be like, oh, man, I fell asleep. Like, I just woke <laughs> up again. It's, and it happens a lot. There's something about my voice that puts my viewers to sleep. So I, I think Shoot, I, I fell asleep on stream once. <laughs> <laughs> no, I haven't done that yet. I haven't done that yet. But I you- closed my eyes and drifted for a second and caught myself. And I'm like, guys, we're ending it tonight. See you later. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that, OK, let's, that's actually a good thing we should talk about. How do you feel about 12 to 24 hour plus streams? Um, I mean, if you're trying to, if you're trying to be active for that long to you know, build a following, more power to you. But if you're streaming outside of your regular time frame, um, whatever you gain in the hours that you're streaming on that is probably not going to result in viewers. Or when you go back to regular schedule. So you're saying so. that it doing an extended stream will actually mess up your regular scheduled streams. No, it won't mess them up. I just don't think it'll contribute to more viewership. Oh, okay. Okay. And you think that's why people do the extended streams for the increased viewership? Some of them do them for charity. Mm. So they get donations for charity, which I agree with. Sure. Um, others, I'm sure they do it for exposure, you know, being around for more hours of the day, more seeing it and anytime anyone sees 24 hour stream in the chat or in the title you know they're going to be clicking on it to see what the person's doing Hmm. so um but i i mean me personally it's i i i one can't do it i tried a 12 hour once and that was the best that i could do and it's just um it's just it's too taxing to me mentally Mm -hmm. to just sit there well actually i tried to do a 12 hour stream early on when i first started streaming just to see um, I made it 12 and a half hours and I should have definitely stopped streaming by like eight or nine. Really? Like I went, my, I had people that, that know me personally come into chat going, dude, you, you look like shit. You need to turn off the stream and go to bed. Right. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay. And then the next day I actually watched the replay and you can definitely see like the last four hours of the stream, I had no energy. I wasn't talking as much, you know, the gameplay sucked. Like it, you could, you can, you can't feel it or tell necessarily at the time, but your viewers definitely can. Right. Yeah. Dale. Right. Well, that's what I'm saying. I, that, like I, when I dozed that one night, I, I knew that I had to end it. And whenever I'm, whenever I'm starting to feel it, mm-hmm. I always know when I'm, when I'm going on the downside on the end of the stream, cause I use this, my, my speech slows down. I don't talk mm-hmm. as often. <laughs> so. Well, and I, you know, I would like to be able to stream four to six hours at a time. But what right. I realized is I've got about a three hour window 
that's that's going to be pretty good. And then I can go up to four hours if I'm into something. But much after that, my pain, I have pain management problems. I'm medically retired. So I have issues with my back, my words, you know, like I realize to stream daily like I do, I need to minimize in order to maximize, right? Minimize the hours, minimize the energy, and it maximizes your, your entertainment value, I think. Right. Right. And that's why I keep mine around six hours. I mean, six that's hours a lot. Is a good number. And when you said you stream six hours at a time, there were several people in chat that actually said that seems like a, a long stream. Do you, yeah. do you find that that works for you? Do you think you would be better at four hours? It's, it's as long as I normally would game. Okay. So if I'm, if I'm gaming, I'm streaming. That's how I look at it. Yeah, and, uh, and I uh, I usually you know I play a lot of games that like I mix it up too when I'm streaming. I usually don't stick to one game unless I'm really sucked into it. Mm. So so even in one stream, you're gonna switch games. I usually do. Yeah. Oh, okay. I usually start off. I just start off with something to get my energy, you know, get the blood flowing, and then mm -hmm. you know move on to something later on. Um, but uh, we I don't normally stick to one game during a stream unless it, like I said unless it's like Sea of Thieves. I could probably stick to Sea of Thieves for a whole stream just because I could I could spend eight hours in that game. Mm. So now that's I think I've seen that played before. That's pirate ships and little islands and skeletons and stuff, right? Yeah, yeah. And and what what about that game draws you in for that many hours at a time? Uh, freedom. 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 It's the, a very the, pirate the answer. <laughs> the game gives you a toolbox and says, "Have fun." Oh, wow! It's really, it's really, it's a sandbox adventure with PvP. It's amazing. I love oh. it. Oh, right, right. So it is multiplayer. Um, do you do you like group up as an armada, like with other people, or is it pretty much one on one? You can you can alliance with other with other ships by tr turning on a certain feature on your ship to to ally together and be on a team um and have our models rolling around um, we've actually done it to where uh we've we've absorbed like another team's boat that was like they were logging off we like we rolled up on them and they were like oh we're leaving like hey hold on before you guys log off invite one of us in and then we'll absorb their boat and then we'll run two ships at once and oh wow and stuff like that yeah um but it's um it's just I mean, the PvP is the most exhilarating part of the game, which is why I think I keep going back, just because it's so, it's so fun to, uh, to know that you're rolling around with like 30,000 gold mm. and you're trying everything in your power to keep your ship from sinking. So. Now, I like, I like Super Sport Games question. Um, if I call him Joe, that's because his name's Joe. But uh, so, so Joe is asking, does, now you... He's referring to you getting six hours at a time to play games and stream. He's asking right. because his wife wants to know, <laughs> uh, does Miss Garbanzo get free time, six hours of free time, you know, when you're not streaming? No, because uh, we, uh, she's, actually, she's actually working as well um, while I'm streaming, but she's, able to, she's working from her laptop in the kitchen taking care of the kids. And the kids are mm. pretty, like my daughter, pretty much entertains herself. When it comes to some things that my son just needs to be fed. Right. I mean, you know, six months, right? You're... Yeah. And, and then, um, and then on the weekends, on the weekends is when, you know, like, obviously she has my help, you know, she's able to go, you know, get her hair done. My mom comes and does her nails. Um, you know, we go like to her sister's house to go to the pool or we'll go to Disney or something. So, but she has, but then she has my, you know, she has my help at night as well. Like I'm up until, I'm up until 2 AM normally while she's sleeping. And take, you know to you know to feed the baby you know before I go to sleep. So now to to ask a question, it may be personal, and so feel free to tell me no. But did, was there a time where there was problems with your wife and with streaming, and you guys had to kind of work figure out, a, you know, how to work together so you could be successful? Um, at first, because my streaming schedule was so sporadic, I kind of just started whenever. Um, it was when I actually got on a schedule and we kept it to the same hour. So she knew when I was going to be live and, 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 and for how long. Hmm. Um, 
and uh but she i mean she's really supporting me because and honestly like this is what i love about her is that she she truly believes she truly believes in me and thinks that i can do i can do streaming as a thing as a full-time thing in the future mm-hmm. she she actually she's not she's not like skeptical about it or or you know or um what's the word i guess I mean, I see, 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 cynical. But she, <laughs> not, yeah, but she's not cynical either. She's very supportive. She's, you know, she's the one that's always pushing me, um, and telling me, you know, to keep going. And um, and she, I mean, honestly, honestly, she's she's a absolute blessing. And outside of streaming alone, she's an absolute blessing. That's um, awesome, man. So I'm very lucky. So, because okay, I've actually, I had two other guests, their, their wives, they, they, I won't throw them under the bus, you know, but it, they said when they first started streaming, their wife was not supportive at all. And they were like, right. you know, what are you doing? You lock yourself away in the room. You're not with me. You're not with the kids. You know, what are you, what are you really doing? Right. But, but then they got their wives to watch some of their streams, to watch the engagement that you can get with, with the DLive community, right? And that mm-hmm. it's, it's. It feels good, right, to to right. have that exchange with a, your regular audience, and they said in both cases their wives ended up coming around and being their biggest fan and supporting them, understanding right. that streaming was important to them, and like you said, that it can legitimately be a career path. Um, I mean, currently to pay your bills, you would need to make a couple hundred thousand lino a month. Right, like um, more than that. Right, like like minimum two hundred thousand lino a month is like twenty four, twenty five hundred dollars. That will yeah. barely pay most people's bills in a month. Yeah, it won't even pay mine. Right, and so that's what. So we the reason we're saying this is because yeah. it's important for people to understand. Like, if you have an expectation. <laughs> yeah. To to you know, oh, I'm gonna start streaming and quit my job. You're gonna lose your house. Like you can't pay your bills. Exactly. In the yeah. beginning. So take your like if you want to start streaming, start streaming, but don't quit your day job yet. Maybe maybe yeah. don't quit your day job at all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it depends. It really depends. I mean, like some some of the streamers that are out there that are either they don't have the they don't have the bills you know that require them to you know have the higher income so mm-hmm. they survive off of what they've got um or you look at the bigger the bigger ones but they're not just living off of sh- subscriber money they're living off of endorsements outside mm. of the platform you know and you have to remember that they're they're selling more than just the streaming platform at that point they're, that's why they make so much money um so it's I mean, like, I, I can't quit my job and it, I will, I probably will work, you know, a full-time job until I die, but this is just a fun idea that we have because, you know, my wife even agreed when I first told her that I wanted to do it because of how much fun my buddies and I would have, where we, like, we'd be sitting there laughing until we cried, uh, you know, some nights because we were just, you know, doing something stupid. And, and when I told her I wanted to stream, she's like, good, because, you know, as much fun as you have, I'm sure other people would enjoy it. <laughs> That's awesome. And that's and that's a very valid point. Like stream what you enjoy because people can tell if you're having a good time or not. Right. Like the, there's been some changes. It, I think it just happened today. Uh, there, there was a community chat to cover the verified partner program on DLive and the requirements necessary to be a verified partner, which you and I both are. Mm-hmm. Um, but also the requirements to be a global partner. Everything's changing. You've got a couple of months for all of this to take effect. Um, right. But I think it's important to talk about. Um, the, the partnership requirements have changed. So I just want to cover this really quick, guys. And Garbanzo and I were talking a little bit about this before the stream started. Uh, Wild mm-hmm. Goose actually... Uh, helped us find the link. So let me let me give you guys this link. If you're interested in the current requirements and DLive partner progression, 
I put the, the link in chat. It's on uh, the DLive.tv website. Uh, but Verified Partner Program. What DLive is looking for is content creators who are interested in growing their channel on DLive. People who are actively promoting DLive and contributing to its growth. Creators who consistently create high quality content on DLive. Active members of the DLive community, so they want you active in Discord, on DLive, as well as other social media platforms of your preference, uh, Twitter being the most popular. They're looking for people who are role models for, for their new users. So in other words, you know, not, not having to cuss too much, not being lewd, right? For, uh, mm -hmm. Providing high quality production value, basically. And they want you to be active in DLive community events which they've just changed the interface on DLive. So if you look over on the left side of your screen, there is a tab now, people that you're following that are live. Below that tab, it actually shows you the, the DLive community events now. So it's an easy way to find them and click on them. But the verified partner requirements are changing. And I think that's what most people want to know about. And that's what most people want to talk about. Um, the new to be now there's a new there's a new category, it's called affiliate, right? It used to just be verified partner, global partner, now affiliate, verified partner, global partner. So to be an affiliate, you need 200 followers. And like Garbanzo and I were saying, they should be organic. You shouldn't go follow for follow just to get the numbers. Um, to be an affiliate, you have to stream at least twice. You must have a completed profile in your account settings. Account settings you can find in the top right corner. If you click on your name, there's a drop down menu. One of the options is account settings. You need to understand the DLive community guidelines. As streamers, we're bound by uh, certain guidelines like you can't allow cyberbullying or hate speech, things like that in your right. chat. And actually, I want to ask you about that, um, Garbanzo. To, when you, to help moderate your channel, do you have moderators? Yes. And how did you choose your moderators and what is it that they, what kind of service do they provide that helps you be successful? Right. Um, so all of my current moderators that support me from my real life uh, and come in and hang out and chat or people that have supported me online through Twitch and that have moved over here with me. Mm. Um, and, they're, and they've already, they already know how I like to keep my chat, you know, no trolling, uh, no, you know, we don't, I mean, trolling is, is sorry, trolling is fine. We, we allow trolling. It's just as long as it's, you know, within context of what's going on in the game or what's going on in the conversation, but people coming in just being trolls to be trolls, we, you know, we don't allow. Well, there's a difference um, between trolling and cyberbullying, right? Right. Like trolling's good natured fun between friends. Mm -hmm. Cyberbullying is you just come in and say something hateful and you don't even know who I am. <laughs> right. So yeah, they they already know like they already know. Oh, like come and ask for subs or follows. They delete them. I don't even see them half the time. They delete them so fast. Mm -hmm. Um. So um, somebody came in talking smack to me, like you said, saying hateful things, and I looked over at chat. And I didn't even see it. I just saw all of them telling him off. <laughs> but, he was, but he was gone. And I was like, what happened? They're like, don't worry about it. But what happened? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I love that. I love that. <laughs> So very important to have moderators that that actually know who you are and will help you have a good time. That will help keep right. your chat from getting derailed by an idiot, basically. Welcoming welcoming viewers and new mm -hmm. viewers, even though you know if even if they follow in the bot welcomes them, welcoming them and saying hello. Uh, my favorite thing, you know, because I am a father, there are times where I do have to walk away midstream. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they're there to let people know who come in saying hello, that I'm away and that I'll be back in a moment, you know, so that way people aren't impatient. That was actually you know, gone. an interesting side effect that I didn't anticipate from my moderators, which was they do welcome people. They do, you know, help like like Wild Goose. We He likes to do Jackbox games sometimes on his streams. I do them every Thursday night on my stream, Thursday night game night. And Wild Goose right. shows up. And starts posting the room code and the link to jackbox.tv and telling other people how to get involved. And that's not something nice. I ask him to do. 
Yeah. But he now that he does it, now I'm like, hey, could you do that thing again? Because that was super helpful. Yeah. yeah, and that's that's what moderators I believe are for. Like that, like that axe is not just there to, you know, hate speech. It's there to help manage the stream. Mm -hmm. um, you're you're essentially an assistant to the streamer while they're live. Like whoever moderates me, I'm always welcoming people. You know. You know, helping post links if they're talking about something, I'll post a link for them, either it's someone's channel or whatnot. Um, I'm always actively trying to stay involved if they ever, if people mod me, you know. And so, mm -hmm. um, my, my moderators do it for me, they're, they're fantastic, you know. And it's it's like an unspoken rule, you know, the mod is kind of just there as the, even as the streamer is talking about something, like, oh, I saw this video the other day, blah blah blah, it was so funny. And the moderator goes and grabs the link and posts it in the chat. <laughs> right that's fantastic you know? now now let's talk a little bit more about moderators some some streamers use the moderator tab to kind of like acknowledge a viewer that's there all the time that's super supportive right and they go okay right. well here's something so that you stand out a little bit um right. however i i've realized some people don't want to be moderator they don't want to feel yeah. that pressure they don't want to have to do anything. They just want to be entertained, right? Right. So, so I, have you ran into that where like you want to give somebody moderator power and they're just like, ah, oh, good, thanks. No, I've never, I've never been in a situation where someone's declined my mod. Mm. Um, I have, I have taken mod away from some people that I've given it to because of what you just said of them being in the stream and supporting because they're you know it was nice because like at times where my other mods weren't there these viewers were always there and so um i just decided because they were there all the time and helping out and you know they would even like welcome they were even being moderators without the moderator like in terms of welcoming people and, right. and stuff like that um or activating the bot for like discord links and so i just modded them because but then um, I recently just pulled it all back because they haven't been in the stream in like two months. And I'm like, well, <laughs> yeah. And I got to clean that up a bit. And you can, you can actually look at moderators now, which I love. You couldn't, you didn't used to be able to have that option. So in case you guys yeah. don't know in the bottom right hand corner where your chat box is, there's a smiley face. That's what you click on to do stickers to the right of that. There's three dots. You click on the three dots, you now have chat room settings. You can see the muted uh, viewers. You can see who your moderators are and you can pop the chat out for a separate window. Uh, so it used to be if you had modded somebody and you wanted to unmod them, you couldn't do that unless they showed back up in your channel and said something so you could find them right. again. So right. we've a lot of us uh, verified partners have been reaching out to D Live and saying, "Hey, we'd really like to have more control over our chat and our moderators," and they've given it to us. So I really oh, I want to say thank you to D Live for listening to the feedback that we're providing and actually implementing it. Right. Very awesome. So so like Wild Goose said, and I and I dig it, man. He's saying like. That's why gift subs are awesome, or it would be good if we can do that, right? Like, you have a loyal viewer, it would be nice to be able to gift them a sub to your channel, even if you have to pay for it as a streamer. I would still do that. Um, or some or like, other, or like a VIP or a VIP thing, like Twitch does, you know, we could have an MVP for where you where they get a special badge when they're in that channel, exactly. I like that a lot. <clears throat> no moderator powers, just you know, stand out. Mm -hmm. All right, so we're going to keep going. The requirements, again, for affiliate, we've covered all that. So now for verified partner, number one, you must be an affiliate. You also need to have 800 followers now instead of 200. You need 5,000 locked in Lino. It used to be 2,000. Now, 5,000 locked in Lino isn't that much money, guys, in case you were wondering. Um, yeah. 1,000 Lino is $12. So five times 12, somebody can do the math. I'm not a mather. <laughs> you need a minimum. Now this is new too. minimum of five subscribers for verified mm. partner. I don't like that because of affiliate. I don't like that at all. Yeah, but but that's a that's something that you can't control. 
as a streamer, I can't control if you guys are subscribing to my channel. I can't. Right. I also can't control if you donate Lino. So I don't agree with those requirements, but that's just me personally. Right now we're talking about the settings, the new settings that are going to go to effect in the next couple months. Um, also, you need, they want an average of 40 concurrent viewers. Is that right? Yeah, to, to apply. So that means you need to average 40 viewers in your stream, every stream to apply. You need to average it for that month, yes. I don't think I've ever done that. And I've been a, I've been a verified partner for months. That's interesting that that's a new thing. Um, I think, you know, I think some of this is very unfortunate because they're encouraging do whatever you got to do to get people into the channel. Not, not necessarily encouraging do the best you can and let it grow organically. Um, well, well, that's, I don't think that's necessarily the case because if you do the best you can and let it grow organically, you can still build your following over time. Um, obviously, you know, there are cheaper tactics that you can use to try to attract, you know, uh, you know, chest, you know, thirst. But um, I personally, like, it sucks because, like, the average, this is, this is to apply, right? So the average of 40 is for anyone who wants to put in an application starting July 1st. Um, anybody who anybody who is already verified has the uh, requirements below just to maintain. Um, and I think with all of this that they're trying to make it more inclusive. So, you know, like we have a lot of global partners exploding at, you know, recently and maybe, you know, maybe they're trying to, you know, rain back on that, you know, and then plus the backlog we had on verified partners to probably trying to pull the reins back on that as well. So, so let's keep going. So they say, okay, for verified partner have streamed on at least seven calendar days and at least seven hours. That's easy. They want 20,000 Lino points and donations and paid subscriptions received over a month. Not easy, but but doable. Um, for global partner, you now must also be a verified partner. You must have at least 3,000 followers, which that jumped dramatically. It was 1,000. You must have 50,000 locked Lino points. That stayed the same. A minimum of 25 subscribers. Uh, you need 150 average CCU to apply, which is nuts. Even, even LT Zonda doesn't have 150 average CCU. Right. He averages around 100. So that's crazy because he's the face of DLive. And they, well, he's not, but he's not affected by the application portion. No, no, I understand, but we're talking about like expectations versus reality. And right. the reality is DLive doesn't do this yet. Most people can't hit these numbers, even if they're already global partner, they can't, they can't meet these right. requirements. Um, I agree. They want you to stream at least 12 days a month and at least 35 hours, that's easy. And they want a hundred, damn, they changed this to 150,000 Lino points and donations and paid subscriptions received a month. Right. Um, so obviously this is getting more difficult. Um, now, if you scroll down a little bit further on this page, it also has, how do I keep my partnership active, which is different right. now. Um, they, they've added the average viewers, like 15 average CCU for verified, 50 average CCU for global. Um, they've gone up to 24 stream days a month for global partner. Damn, that's crazy. They want you to stream 24 days a month and 70 hours. Those two things don't really add up, in my opinion. I don't, I don't like that. Also, what if you want to take a vacation? Do you yeah, lose your global for a month? That's nuts. 20, to, to, even a full-time job doesn't make you work more than 20 days a month. So 24 days streaming a month, that's insane, and it's wrong, and you need to change it. And that's just my personal opinion. Um, I mean, yeah, there's, there's only 31 days. It's a week off. 
They've also added that you have to host at least two unique channels a month for Verify and that you have to host at least four unique channels for Global. I, I like the idea that they want you to host people. I, I find it strange that it would be a requirement. Um, no. And then there's, there's other stuff that we can go into, but I don't think we need to at the moment. I just want to know, what do you guys think as viewers? You've been listening to me read through all this. What do you what do you feel about it? I mean, I see that you guys are talking about it in chat some. So, I I do want to say that the requirement to apply is, is a little ridiculous to have 40 and 150 as the requirement to apply. Um because then the requirement to maintain is much lower and that just doesn't seem like it it should be. Like if you want to make the main, you know, the like for a verified partner, the average 15 people to maintain, then maybe the requirement for that calendar month to actually apply would be 20, not 40. Now here's, here's how I could see it affecting me like right away. I stream every day because I like streaming, right? Not because it makes me extra money, not because I get extra viewers. Matter of fact, like you were alluding to earlier, Gonzo, there's plenty of slow days. Right. And if I wanted to maximize my CCU and all that, I could just stream on specific days where I know there's more people available. Oh. Well, Goose made a good point. Yeah, we should have. What do you it's say? Two months. It's 24 days in two months. So it's 12 days a month still. Wait, two. I'm, I'm confused. Says, so these requirements aren't it says monthly? Every two months. It says every two months right there above. You look at Global Partner right underneath maintain 25 subscribers every two months, and then you have the 50 average. The okay, now that's that makes more hours. sense. That makes a lot yeah. more sense. Now, here's the thing that I don't like about that, though, and, the, and this I'm adamant about, and I don't know how they would change it, but I think they should. I stream every day. I've streamed every day since March 1st, right? Like 100 plus days straight now. But if you ask DLive, I have not streamed every day since March 1st. And it's because they don't base today on my time zone. Right. They base today on one time zone for everybody. Well, we're all over the world. So if I start streaming at 7 p.m. and you're and they're going off a UK time zone, I didn't start streaming today. I started streaming tomorrow because it's six hour difference. Right? So they're screwing up my my streak by basing my today on their time zone instead of my own personal time zone. That needs to be fixed, period. You, you can't say that my day is based on your day when it could literally be 12 hours difference. Right. So I would like to see that change. I'm just- I, 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 And I think the average, I think the average to apply needs to come down, obviously. So, so Booby, Booby says, I'm just a viewer, so I don't know much, but what's the incentive to be verified or even global? So I can tell you what it used to be. It's changing now. I, I can't speak specifically to this moment, but what it used to be was to be verified partner meant, A, you get the check mark, which people seem to appreciate, right? I appreciated it because it was DLive saying, hey, we see what you're doing. We appreciate your hard work. We like it. Also, a big part of it was getting a subscription button. People could now support you. And not for me, it wasn't about getting an extra, you know, 300 Lino from them. It was more about allowing them to join. For me, it's the Aloha Club. You get, to, you get Aloha next to your name, you're part of the Aloha Club. I like that. I like having that space available for people. Um, that was my main incentive. Also, financially, as a verified partner, you get... Well, as, as a streamer, you get content bonus based on the interaction and the Lino donation, a number of things exactly seven days after the end of your stream. So if you stream every day, you're getting a content bonus daily. If you have locked in Lino points, you're getting a locked in Lino points reward daily. And right. that's, that's nice. That adds up. So when you on oh, yeah. your content bonus, if you're a verified partner, you would get 10% extra increase in Lino on your content bonus. If you're a global partner, you would get 30% increased Lino 
payout on a content bonus. So those are the main reasons why people want to do it. Also, some people, it's a status symbol, obviously, to get verified or global partner. Right. So yeah, so you can, you can get now with the new affiliate program, it's much easier to get a subscription button for your channel. Now, I'm, I'm curious, Goose or, or Garbanzo, does somebody know, can you host as an affiliate or is hosting still Verify Partner Global Partner? Still Verify Partner. They have it on the benefits down below. You okay. can see affiliate benefits is just a paid subscription. And then Verify has a huge list and then Global has an extended list. Okay. And then also I know to be... Uh, if you're a global partner, don't you get a better hosting? Isn't there, I forget the right way to say that, but you get dedicated servers or better connection or something to DLive? Yeah, you get the, um, the what is it? Tran the guaranteed uh, transcoding. That's right. It's called transcoding. I forgot that word. So you, you get a better connection to the server and you're less likely to have your stream drop out. Yeah, you get a nice little welcome package too for becoming global. You get ten Nijiginis and a hundred in the D Live merchandise store. Okay. Yeah, and and uh, I agree with you, Goose. In my opinion, transcoding should be universal across the site. I agree with you, but the problem that it comes down to is uh, you got to have hardware to support that. And it's a new company; they still don't have enough servers enough you know bandwidth and i mean because it's growing so quickly that you know they they're not keeping up uh but but like like goose said and i think garbanzo and i were talking about earlier most viewers on this site like three quarters of the viewers on this site use mobile devices so they're limited on bandwidth and the more that like the higher frame rates and things that we use the more difficult it is for them to view us on a mobile platform But again, DLive is, I wouldn't say they're still in alpha, but they are most certainly still in beta. The, the website changes constantly, the user interface, the software, they're changing the hardware, they're changing. Lino is still on a test net. It's not even a cryptocurrency. It's a private currency with a fixed price point of 1.2 pennies per Lino. Um, you know, there's talk. What do you, what's your opinion on that, Garbanzo? Do you think that Lino would do better to stay as a private currency with a locked price point? Or do you think it would change things if it went to cryptocurrency in a mainnet? That's, that's tough because, like, the opportunity for the value of change on the public, you know, on the public blockchain would be tremendous, right? You know, for the value to increase for for the data that everyone's holding, but um, on the private market here, I mean, essentially, it's just bits. Like, you know, it's just a currency to use to donate. Mm -hmm. It's really nothing, really nothing outside of that. Um, so, I mean, as long as it's a private currency like it is, where we're just using it in the site to donate and share, um, I mean, the value really won't change, and um you know, the benefit will just be that it's just the currency to use and it's easy to transfer between users. But, um, but if it's, if it's a public coin, I mean, then, then the game changes there, you know, it, it gets a little bit more exciting to me. Yeah. And obviously if Lino goes from a test net to a main net, the price point is then based on availability as well as demand of, and that's with any product, right? So there is, there's plenty of talk among the crypto crowd that if DLive does go public, they they think that it, the, the price may spike, but it will definitely crash and then it would even out. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Based on people automatically cashing out as quickly as possible to because it's maybe maybe the price jumps and they want to get hit that price point. Um, other people would do it to be, you know, a long term investment. Um, there's some talk that there could be a concern about Lino disappearing when it went from a test net to a main net. Like I, you know, I don't pretend to understand any of that. In my opinion and what, and my actions, I invested in Lino because I believe in DLive, not because I 
know anything about cryptocurrency or private currencies or any of that. Right. So I locked in Lino. I'm going to leave it locked in. I continue to add a little bit more occasionally just because I want to support DLive and Lino as companies because I want to see them be successful. Just to be clear, the Lino tokens that exist now are test net tokens. It's completely different. So you would need to cash it out and buy the main net token. Right. And I've, I, okay. So that makes sense because if currency is private and then it goes public, that, those are going to be completely different currencies at that point. And so that makes sense that you'd need to cash out and then rebuy back in. And that would also, I think that's like kind of levels the playing field in um, right. It, it, in one way, it seems like it kind of sucks because as an early investor, I locked in my Lino six months ago and to keep adding to it, it seems like I should be rewarded if there's a financial gain, you know, for being here for a while. So that right. part kind of sucks, but it also makes sense that everybody would start on the same level playing field if the currency, be if the private currency became a cryptocurrency. It's for legal reasons. Yeah, that makes and that makes sense, Goose. That makes sense. Uh, but Excuse I'm not. Me just one moment. I apologize. Yeah, no problem. So, so anyway, guys, we, what we're talking about now is if Lino goes from a private currency to a mainnet, then it would actually be considered cryptocurrency, because currently, if the value of the of the Lino is locked. It's not crypto. Crypto is is based on supply and demand and available like availability. And that's what drives the price point up or down. So currently, Lino, there's a fixed amount of Lino. It's at a set price. That means it's private currency. Also, depending on what country you're in, there are legal implications to using cryptocurrency. Some countries support it. Some countries don't. Uh, but given that our world is run by banks and money, you can see which countries, based on their political environment, will support cryptocurrency. Because my understanding is the idea behind cryptocurrency was specifically to take the banks out of the loop, do private exchanges between citizens, and remove the middleman, which, which I am a huge, huge supporter of. <laughs> Lino is Chuck E. Cheese tokens right now. Exactly. Don't pay parking fees with Chuck E. Cheese tokens. Very illegal. You learned that from Fibbage 3. <laughs> oh, that's funny. So, so guys, if, if you have questions for uh, Garbanzo or myself about DLive, about streaming, about him in particular, now's the time we like to get into those sort of questions. So if you... If you have any specific questions for, uh, for Garbanzo or myself, please start putting them in the chat and we'll start answering them as they come along. Um, are, you, are you going to be streaming yes. today, Garbanzo? Uh, yes, um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna go grab a snack and a, and a refill on my drink. Then I'm gonna get started once we're done here. Okay, so yeah, guys, after, after our uh, fireside chat is complete, which uh, shouldn't be too much longer, actually. Um, Garbanzo is going to take a quick break and then go live. So if you'd actually like to see him streaming, um, you could do that. And I'll, I'll host you once you go live, Garbanzo. Okay, sounds good. <laughs> Grevin wants to know, moment of truth, what voice changer do you use to get that so, so smooth voice? Uh, it's, uh, it's called the uh, Life Voice Changer. <laughs> it, was, it was given to me when I was born. Actually, and, uh, it was probably given to you in your early teens. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I, uh, my my voice has been my voice has been pretty baritone since like ten. Nice. Yeah. Nice. I was I was chatting with so so smooth was my first very first guest on uh, Fireside Chats, nice. and he's got that like. Hey yo, how you doing? Yeah, it's, uh, thank you for being here. Uh, just to listen to me talk uh, you know it's like <laughs> yeah yeah i am here just to listen to you talk 
<laughs> and uh, you've got you've got that similar pleasing voice. So, I, I, I apparently I do. I feel like it's annoying, but I, everybody hates their voice. Yeah, when you actually, it's funny because when you hear yourself back, it's like, wait, I sound like that. It's you know, it's interesting. The real question is, why are you wearing a Tampa hat, Garbanzo? That's what I, rep I represent, baby. That's what Motions wants to know. Everybody coming into Joe's stream who has not seen me before knows exactly where I'm from. <laughs> he, ma he makes no apologies for being from Florida. Um, and I feel like maybe most people from Florida wouldn't know enough to apologize, right? So I don't hold that against you. Uh, I feel like... <laughs> All right, thanks for coming by, guys. <laughs> so, so, uh, which which Disney is in Florida? World, the world, Disney the World. World. Okay, so yeah. actually, the most important one, right? Well, the only, the only <laughs> legitimate one, uh, obviously, oh. Disney World. Um, yeah. But uh, I have, I actually have some um, a little bit of history with Disney World. Um, right when I was. I'm a, a military veteran and I was injured and I was spending some time in the hospital, the, the James A. Haley Hospital in Tampa. And they had an art contest amongst each local clinic and hospital in the state of Florida for oh. art. And it was based on your disability rating in terms of which category. So like if you had no arms, you wouldn't be painting against somebody that had both their arms, right? So it kind of split up each category. So you still had a chance of winning basically. Um, and so I actually won my category as well as best of for the whole hospital. And then they went to a regional voting. I won the regional. Then the Elks had their annual art competition at Disney World for the state. And I actually won the state competition at Disney World as well. For, wow. for painting yeah so it was like awesome i think it was 2008 if i remember correctly it was awesome man and and yes goose i wasn't actually going to go into that but i also used to wrestle alligators uh as a street performer at disney world oh. no i'm just i'm kidding that didn't happen <laughs> son of a <laughs> that didn't happen that was just painting yeah just a painting <laughs> uh, although a child was killed by yeah. a gator at Disney. Thanks, thanks to another ne negligent. I can't even talk. Negligent parents, man. That's crazy, right? Like, there's there's an actual um, there's an actual sign that like, tells people you know to be to beware. And I guess like the kid was just like chilling by the edge of the water, and the gator just came up. Yeah, that's nuts. That's nuts. So if you've never been to Florida, people will eat you. Alligators will eat you. Like, people will eat you. you have to be careful you never you don't know we'll about the, the bath salts we'll have, you don't know about have. bath salts the bath, the bath salts that was in miami bro this is, that's like that's like san francisco practically come on oh so miami uh, is not part that doesn't count as part of florida no miami counts but i mean it's just a whole different world down there have you been to miami? <laughs> no uh, intention i've been this is as far as i've been i've been to gator alley okay all right well um, Miami is literally a different country. <laughs> okay, okay. I've been to Boca Raton to buy, you know, a twelve thousand dollar engagement ring, which, you know, damn. But haven't been to Miami. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the part in Super Seducer where you tell a bummer alligator story and the chick walks away. <laughs> it's. <laughs> It's too late. We already covered the baby getting eaten by a gator at Disney. <laughs> All right, guys. Does Death Guard didn't have legs this time around, or will it flame out again? I don't even know. I think it has legs, but it just depends. Uh, what, do, what do they mean? Well, um, because Death Guard, I think this is like, it's like been re, what's the, not, not like remastered, or but like refurbished. Hmm. They've really like up, updated a lot of the game, and and improved it in different areas. So, um, you know, the community like was hot before, 
and then it kind of died off and then they've kind of like fixed the game and updated it and now it's really popular again i mean it's a lot of fun it's a lot of fun it's uh so i mean, i just don't know if the community will will stand it's 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 such a niche game you know it's not it's not really so wait death garden okay so you're not i was confused so death garden and dead by daylight are different games they're different games by the same developer oh okay okay now does death garden work similarly to dead by daylight with the like the 5v1 thing yes yeah okay same same style, just more fast paced. And that's why it's five. That's why it's five versus one instead of four versus one. It's a little bit more faster. The 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 scavengers are faster. The hunter is really fast and very overpowered. In uh, Death <laughs> In Garden. Cases. In Death Garden. Yes. So, do you prefer Dead by Daylight? No. No. It's it's too slow now. You go back to Dead by Daylight after playing Death Garden, and it's very very mm. tiring. Mm slow it's only exciting when you're running from the when you're running from the killer and even then he you know unless you're really good at dodging he, he's gonna get you <laughs> oh, okay okay well this because i'm gonna take a look at both of them and see um which one do you prefer playing and streaming the death garden uh, death garden for sure uh to, to tell you they have a bundle mm. they have a bundle for sale that's cheaper than both the games combined so if you wanted to just buy them both you could probably buy them in that bundle and spend less than what the game costs okay well I'll definitely check that yeah. out so fire says miami is not in florida it's surrounded by florida just like austin in texas <laughs> right i've yeah. actually heard that before about austin yeah yeah miami doesn't count and really <laughs> and really orlando orlando doesn't count but disney's there so we have to we have to include them mm. i see i see <laughs> Tampa's the best. Yeah. Suck it. <laughs> <laughs> I actually I, nah. I enjoyed my time in Tampa a lot. I did. I, I have to say I love I love Tampa just because we have we have everything here. We literally have everything here, including a theme park and a water park. We got beaches, we got ports of call for boats and, and cruise ships. We've got gambling, we have a casino here. Hmm. Um, when did got, the casino got, show up? Uh, the Hard Rocks, like oh. 10, 15 years ago. Okay. Maybe. Well, I knew there was yeah. a Hard Rock in Orlando as part of Disney, but I didn't, they were doing shows yeah. and stuff. They weren't gambling. Yeah, no, our Hard Rock is a casino hotel. Oh. Yep. And it's, and it's nice. It's very nice. My buddy and I, we, uh, when we were in college, we went in there and played war, you know, 50, 50, you win what you put down. And, um, <laughs> we, we sat there for nine hours and and earned enough in chips to pay our rent that week or that month. Nice. Now that's a bad yeah. that's a bad expectation to set though. No, 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 no. Yeah, we, we <laughs> didn't go in there with we didn't even go in there with the expectation, but because we were on such a hot streak with winning, mm. we just started betting more and betting more and mm -hmm. just winning more and winning more and yeah it was it was it was fun we were throwing chips at the waitresses to like rub our backs and bring us drinks it's crazy <laughs> all right all right, all right hold crazy. on we don't we don't have the nsfw turned on so we can't no no no, no 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 <laughs> they give you they give you shoulder they give you shoulder rubs to relieve your stress clearly not married at the time right uh i was dating but i wasn't married but i mean it's a shoulder rub yeah hey, hey to ask your wife like Hey, you mind if I go to the casino and have the waitress give me a shoulder massage? The answer would be yes. <laughs> she she would mind. <laughs> I think it's, she minds more today than she did. Then. Have you ever seen the movie Pulp Fiction? Because a foot rub means everything. <laughs> <laughs> they don't mean we we try to act like they don't mean anything, but they do. <laughs> All right, guys, we've completely we've completely gone off the rails. If you have a question for Garbanzo, now's the time. We've literally been going two hours and uh, oh. can't wear this man out. He's got work to do. He's got entertainment to provide. <laughs> and, uh, you know, obviously say hi to the wife and kids. You know, that's important. But it just, just in summation, Garbanzo, is what's the one thing, just off the top of your head quick, if somebody's new to streaming, What's the one thing, the one piece of advice, and I mean specifically on DLive, not just in general. 
what's the one piece of advice you could give them to help them have a better chance at being successful as a streamer? Uh, stay true to themselves and remain genuine. Mm. Do you? Do you? Be you, because people are only going to like who you are. And if you fake it for attention elsewhere, it's not going to work out in the long run. I like that. I, and the, that's actually, uh, there's two main answers I get to that question on all of these. Be yourself, be genuine, right. and be consistent, right? Yeah. Whether you can only stream one day a week or, or more, be consistent. Yep. And, and I some, actually, exactly. something I would like to elucidate a little bit, you hit on earlier, Garbanzo, which is you actually have changed what days you stream because you find that some days you're, you have a better audience than other days. So how important is that for people, not only to, to pick the day that's consistent, that they can be consistent, but also the day that they find their audience? Right. That's, it's, all, it's all trial and error. You, you, need, to, you need to stream um you need to stream on different days that you're available to stream and then but you also you know you need to people say like don't pay attention to the numbers but truly but truly you know track trends you know follow mm -hmm. trends on your channel when you're playing a certain game when you're playing at a certain hour when you're mm -hmm. playing on a certain day track all of those trends because you know there's going to be some days at a certain hour with a certain game you're going to have a better viewership than another you know mm -hmm. so you need to you need to experiment and find what works best for you and the audience that you find. You know, you can't, you can't be all over the place all the time because you're never going to find something that's consistent and solid. It's always going to be if they're available to watch you type of thing. Mm -hmm. um, you need to find an audience that's available when you're available. And the only way is when you're on and they find you. So now the one, like I said, the one thing that, um, the one, the one thing that's changed, that I, I have a problem with, with the new uh, verified partner requirements is the concurrent viewers. Now here's why. I like to change games, right? I like to play, I like to keep it fresh for myself. I like to keep it fresh for the audience. Recently, the last few days, I played Railroad Tycoon 3. The yeah. reason I play Railroad Tycoon 3 is because one, my autistic brain loves it. But two, because it's, it's, I have an affinity for trains because of my grandfather. He used to like right. to build the, you know, the custom train tracks and have all the little trains running around. And that's, that's how awesome. we spent time together, right? Now here's the problem, uh, Bean. I get like three viewers, right? maybe five viewers. Nobody gives a shit about watching me build train tracks at all. Right. They just don't. So my viewership plummets when I play certain games like Railroad Tycoon 3, that's gonna screw me up. Now, instead of playing Railroad Tycoon 3 because I wanna think about my grandfather and I wanna enjoy the game, I'm gonna to have to not play that game because it's gonna screw up my concurrent viewers, which is gonna screw up whether I'm a partner or not. Right. See what I mean? So it's kind of taken away some of my freedom as a streamer if I want to maintain verified partner on DLUG. That's right. unfortunate, in my opinion. It is, it is a bit unfortunate. And the only thing, um, uh, it does plummet it when you're playing dead games, but I did get 12 people on Star Wars, Grevin. Just saying. But... <laughs> Um, that's not enough. I, uh, that's not enough. I know, it's, not, it's, not, it's not enough. It's not enough. But for, for, for the fact that I even had twelve people watch me play a game that hasn't been around for over ten years, I'll take it. I'll take it. But, right. Um, but in that regard, I, I want to mention a streamer. Have you you heard of Sips? Right. Uh. -uh. No. Okay. Sips. Sips is a Twitch streamer. Um, not to go to Twitch, but. He's a, he's a Twitch streamer, and he's built his following off of playing Skyrim, okay? Mm -hmm. He plays Skyrim all the time. I was introduced to him a couple of years back, and it's really what piqued my interest at streaming in general. Mm -hmm. um, but he, he, when he plays Skyrim, he gets about, you know, 3,500 people watching. But he also plays games like you, like like the, the Railroad Tycoon, or the, or uh, he plays... Uh, 
um, what's the one game you the City Simulator, City Skylines? Mm-hmm. He plays that, and his viewership is roughly still you know around the same number. So it's like it sucks. It, it sucks to say, but like you've got to play some of the games that you enjoy, but you're probably not in the mood for to start pulling in more eyes. But you're wanting to snag the people that watch you for you. Mm -hmm. And then that's when you're able to play what you want and they're there. You know what I mean? I mean, and that's, that's what fires is saying in chat too, which is you need to build a community that doesn't care what you stream. But I'm here to tell you, even if, if I go into a streamer's channel that I like, right. That I visit all the time that I'm subscribed to that I follow and they're playing a game that's violent or they're playing, they're cussing, they're, they're, they're angry or worked up because the game play is, is that intense. I'm not going to stay. I'm not going to, I'm not going to consume content that I don't want to consume, even if I like the person, right? So the idea that we could build communities that will be in our channel, regardless of what we're streaming. Well, yeah, if, if we've been doing it five or 10 years, but yeah. I've been streaming less than six months, right? right? So people still don't know who I am yet in large numbers, right? Like I've got 1,400 followers, but average 10 viewers or less, right? Unless I'm doing podcasts, yeah. then, they, then the numbers jump 20, 50, 100, depending on my guest. But I don't know. I, I, I guess what I'm saying is I don't want to see – I don't want to see DLive turn into like tricks – to keep people around that aren't necessarily right. a part of your community that care who you are or want to chat or be friends with other people in the chat. I mean, yeah, and just, just to answer like to like you and to Firus, you know, saying, you know, how you need to either build a community or fill your chest. It's, it's a lot, this, this is streaming is a lot harder than anyone really, I think understands. Um, in terms of building a following, especially when you're interacting with other streamers, because you're not gonna gain, you're not gonna gain much in terms of a viewership from you know like another streamer's viewership, right? They're gonna be more loyal to them. It's, it's it always works that way. Mm -hmm. You never really find people where you go into their stream and they say, "Hey, come check me out," and they all go there instead. You know, it just doesn't happen. So, um, to build your following, it just it takes time and. And that's the one thing that I've had to pound into my head because, like, sometimes, you know, I like when I had my streams where I would only have like two people the whole night. But when I was streaming before, I was getting upwards of almost 30. It's like, mm. okay, well, how am I going from 30 to two? You know, but it's just, again, it's about finding your audience, finding when to provide that content for your audience. And then they'll be there. And, and like I said, it sounds a lot easier coming out of my mouth than it actually is being applied to your stream. But, I mean, all I can say is, you know, in that regard, is like patience. You know, you have to have patience. Yeah. So uh, just, I guess what we're saying, if you're a new streamer, is don't expect to just smash it right away. You right. know, just, just log on, stream, be consistent, be yourself, and wait. <laughs> just, exactly. Just do you and wait. Um, I, I, I know, like, personally, that being a verified partner means a lot to me because it's the platform acknowledging that they appreciate my time and effort. Cincy, what's up, brother? But at the same time, I don't want it to become, I don't want my time on DLive to become about making money for the platform. I want it to be about me enjoying myself with the community. I don't, I don't like that the money option has crept into partner requirements as much as it has, right? Like I'm not right. on DLive to make money for myself. So why the hell should I have to be focused on making money for the platform? That's how I feel about it. Right. So, okay. Go ahead. Can I ask you a question? Absolutely. So, um, with the affiliate, with the affiliate program, um, I guess like one of the main things, one of the main things I guess you'd be losing would be like your tick and your ability to host and your stickers. Right. 
I think so, yes. Yeah, so, I mean, I mean, in that regard, you're still going to be able, you know, like the money that you're making is still going to be able to be, you know, put, you pushed back into the pro, you know, the, the platform if you want to, like you're doing. Um, but you just don't have, you know, the hosting ability. And I mean, I, mean, I guess like the hosting ability, I really wish that was available regardless, like for anyone, because other platforms have it without a rank. Uh, but I mean, it's not really something that's really going to hurt you or, or help you in that regard, I think. Hmm. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, I've grown accustomed to being able to have custom stickers and I'll, I'll go watch a streamer, watch what game they're playing and go make a custom sticker just to drop in their channel for that moment. I do it all the time and then delete right. it and make a new one for somebody else later. And I like doing that. It's more interactive. It's more entertaining. It's more apropos. Um, but I also like, I like the idea that, that the platform recognizes the effort that I'm putting in, right? Because right now, like somebody said earlier in chat, it seems like DLive is more focused on poaching talent and, and communities from other platforms more so than they are interested in growing new talent here on DLive. I, I don't know that I would 100% agree with that, but I've most certainly seen that side of DLive, right? Bringing, focusing on bringing in other streamers instead of focusing on the streamers that are already here. Right. But I think there could be, their argument made is like, yeah, but they're trying to be a successful streaming platform and you need, you need streamers, but also more importantly, consumers, viewers to be successful yes. long-term. Yeah, and that's the thing is like you need you need to have a, a better viewer ratio versus streamers for it to really you know be something better. the The other thing is like, I mean, I think PewDiePie is is publicity enough. You know, they, they did, I don't think they really need to poach anything else or anyone else, but um, it doesn't hurt. I mean, I'm not gonna say it's the right thing to do, but it doesn't hurt the platform to bring to bring um, more, more people, more consumers to this platform. Right, absolutely. It, web traffic is what's gonna monetize this platform, right? Viewership, how long they're on the site and how many unique viewers visit the site on a monthly basis. That is, that is something with websites that you can actually monetize. So yeah, like, like a lot of my streamers that I've, I've had on here as guests, will tell you, they've been streaming for years and it took them years. And then to move to DLive was scary because will my audience follow me or not? A lot of them are like, well, the ones that truly support me will follow me. They, they won't care what platform I'm on, uh, which is actually how I got to DLive. I followed LT Zonda over from Twitch. I've been watching him a couple years there and I didn't give a damn about Twitch. I, I gave a damn about my buddy Luke. So when he transferred over, I transferred over. Right. You know, so there's a, there's a lot of um, trepidation, I think, with streamers, especially new streamers in terms of am I successful? Am I hitting the numbers? Am I making the Lino? And I would I would like to see some of that focus move back towards are you providing quality content? Right. Are you growing your channel organically? You know, right. Um, are you following the terms of service and keeping your chat? non-toxic as much as you can right i feel like those should be the focal points and i believe right. everything else would grow behind that i agree 100 percent. and and it's also your you know your circle of streamers that you interact with because the more that you represent them on your channel the more of a representation of you they become mm. So you have to you have to be better at you know knowing who to keep in your circle and who to not. Um, so that's a that's a great point. Um, I've I've actually stepped away from supporting certain streamers because of their toxic nature. And right. what I realized was people get used to seeing you there, they exp right, and then when you step away, they notice. And I've had people actually reach out to me privately and say, "Hey, how come you aren't?" here in this chat anymore and I'll right. explain why and they'll be like oh yeah I can see that it makes sense 
Like I, yeah. what you put into your head is who you are and who you become. So I'm not going to consume negative content because I'm a positive, happy, healthy, loving human being. And I want to stay that way. Right. So I, I guess I'm, I'm somewhat unique as a, as a streamer because I am not streaming for money and I don't care about the money side of it. I don't cash out Lino. I actually buy Lino every month and give away all the Lino that I make because I, I like doing that. It's enjoyable to support people who are creating content, right? I'd rather spend a couple hundred dollars a month on this platform than spend a hundred to two hundred dollars a month paying for cable. Right. Right. I don't watch it. I don't consume it. They're not creating content that I find valuable. But there are plenty of streamers on DLive that are doing that. <laughs> Thank you, Boomer. Appreciate that. The guys who've been, Epic Merch says, the guys who've been streaming for a while will come out and support you and you'll grow if you're creating good content. That's, that's, I find that to be true. Absolutely. So yeah, just to be clear, guys, we'll talk about Lino real quick. There's a couple tips I always like to add at the end of these about Lino specifically. Number one, if you lock in Lino, you become co-owner of the Lino platform and you get daily dividends, daily rewards based on the total amount of Lino exchanged on that given day and the total amount of Lino that you have locked in. I've got 110,000 locked in. I average around three to 400 free Lino a day from that just so you guys have a frame of reference. Nice. Um, also, if you buy Lino, try to buy it on your computer. The, the um, transaction fee is much less. If you're buying your Lino through like app, Apple or through mobile apps, you could pay up to 30% fee on your Lino. So you'll get at max value around $100, you're actually gonna get 2,000 less Lino buying it through a mobile platform than you will buying it through your computer or a desktop application. Um, also, the, a, D a Lino tip that I like to give you guys for DLive is, if you go to your favorite streamer's channel and they're not live and you still wanna donate Lino to them, as long as you're on the desktop version, you can see their replays and the replays will be yep. just below their screen in a tab. You can donate Lino on any replay, whether the people are live or not. So you can still donate Lino to your favorite streamer, even if they're not live. In case, you know, you just watch replays and you're missing them live. Uh, let's see. I'm just just uh, catching up with chat here. I did that. I did that once. A uh, buddy of mine, who's a streamer, came into my chat one night, and we were talking about a guy who was going around hosting and then asking for a subscription mm. after he hosted you. And he came in saying that he wanted a lemon, and I, as a joke, I went to his channel and donated a lemon to one of his viewers on the stream. Nice. Yeah, we, you know, chan We had we didn't really get into channel etiquette too much on this stream, but. I guess the short version would be if you go into somebody's channel and you try to make it about you, you're screwing it up, right? You need you might cut out from me. I didn't hear you. Yeah. I was saying, if you go into a person's stream and you try to take the focus off the streamer and put it on yourself, right. that's bad. That's wrong. Yeah. 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 And, and exactly Epic merch. So Epic merch says, you know, the same way, they donate and sub to people they want to, not because they have to, but because they enjoy their content. Right. Rachel, you have yeah. fun. Ray, R Rowdy Souls has a live show tonight. Hopefully you guys get to live stream that. That would be awesome. Anyway, don't work too hard, lady. Aloha. <laughs> All right, guys, so we're gonna wrap this thing up. If you have a burning, and I mean burning desire to ask Garbanzo a question, do it now, because he is, then not going to be available for like a half hour, <laughs> like, like in a, like 30 minutes, you won't even be able to talk to him, but then he's going live. So you'll still be able to talk to him. But if you guys, if you guys are watching this on YouTube, or if you missed part of this conversation or any of the previous, like 30 of these that we've done, um, they're all in YouTube in their entirety. Author Joe Holt, you'll, you'll see a playlist called Fireside Chats. I'll be adding Garbanzo's uh, fireside chat to that playlist. It'll take about an hour and then uh, I'll drop you a link Garbanzo in discord or I can and I can come by your stream if you like and drop a link to your video. Uh, but I would 
I would like to thank you for being here today. I really appreciate your time and your insights. So thank you very much, sir. I thank you for having me on. And uh, I, I wouldn't say it's uh, insight as much as my opinion. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> but yeah. Well, you know, I, I disagree. <laughs> I, I find that you've been streaming for over a year. You've been streaming on multiple platforms. I politely disagree. I feel like you have plenty to offer, and uh, that's why I was excited to get you. you on the show. Really appreciate, I appreciate it. it. And I, I mean, if you ever want to have me back on for anything else, I would love to. It'd be great. Absolutely. And and if you would like, like I said, if you ever need a guest. Oh, no, um, I'm taking you up on that offer. Don't worry. I'm going to let Wobbles know as well. Okay, <laughs> Sooner very than, good. than later, for sure. Very good. <laughs> All right, sir, if you'll hang on for me for one second, I'm going to wrap up the show, and I'll be right back with you. All right. Okay, guys, so this has been Author Joe Holt. This is uh, a, a live podcast I do. We call it Fireside Chats. We like the fire, and uh, we get to know a streamer. The entire idea behind this podcast, the reason I started it was because I want to be able to help you guys understand that we are real human beings. Streamers have desires, they have goals, they have passions, they have families, they have full-time jobs, and we do the best we can to provide you guys with quality content. We genuinely appreciate your support, uh, your Lino donations, your subscriptions, just the time that you spend with us is your most valuable asset. And we genuinely appreciate it. And also the Fireside Chats are about helping you understand what streaming is, what it takes, if you wanna stream, the types of things that you're gonna to need to do to be successful. Also things definitely don't do because it's gonna harm you. Uh, but I really appreciate you guys being here, Miss Garbanzo. I really miss Bonzo. I uh, really appreciate you being here. Mr. Garbanzo, really appreciate you being here. Goose, uh, Rachel, everybody that's been here, Chicky, Boomer, Cincy, all of you that have donated. Um, I didn't call, I don't call them out during the stream because it derails the conversation and we like to keep it about the guests. But I do see them. I do appreciate them. I do love you guys very much. And thank you very much for being here. Um, I, I can't say that enough, you guys. You're, I do, I'm a very positive person. I like to help people. And so what I will leave you with is this. If you don't appreciate your current reality, if you would like to change it, if you'd like to make it more ideal, it's simple. This is how you do it. Your thoughts create the possibility of your reality. So if you have negative thoughts, you're gonna, your possibilities are negative. If you have positive thoughts, your possibilities are positive. And it's your perception of an event not the actual event that determines if it's positive or negative. So your thoughts create the possibility, but it's your words and your actions that actually manifest your reality. So if you wanna have a happier life, use happier words. If you wanna have a more successful relationship, use better words, right? Even if you don't feel well, you tell yourself that you feel well, you work on feeling well, you hang out with other people that feel, that, that feel good, right? That's how you increase your sense of well being. So anyway, I appreciate you guys being here. If you ever want to talk, if you ever need some love and some aloha, my name is author Joe Holt. I'm always available. Most, I would say, I would say 100% of the guests I've had on Fireside Chats are incredible people. They're beautiful, loving souls. They genuinely support each other in the community. So if you go into the Fireside Chats playlist and you scroll through, I guarantee you, you can find some new streamers you haven't seen and that you will genuinely enjoy your time with them. So again, thank you guys for being here today. I genuinely appreciate it. Um, something that I'm trying to do more and more is drop a uh, host for people after, keep you guys entertained if you're looking to continue to be entertained. So I'm gonna scroll through right now. You know, I see a streamer on that I really, really appreciate and that I really, really love. Um, actually, there's, <laughs> there's so many. But um, I would like to drop you off at a friend of mine, he's a recent guest on Fireside Chats. His name is Lord Amish. He's just, he's got, he's just good people. He's got great energy. He's full of love. And, um, and I really enjoy his content. And he has blue hair. So if you're into blue hair, he's got it. Also, he has some crazy nice merch. He has custom shirts, logos. He's got great production value. So I'm going to leave you guys today. I really appreciate you being here. Garbanzo, love you, buddy. Boomer. Wild Goose, all of you, Grevin, I'll definitely be checking you guys out more. So I will see you soon, wherever you are in the world. I send you love and light. Aloha for now.
All right, Bonzo. So let's see. I stopped streaming. I'm going to turn on. Oh, wait, hold on. I'm going to have to. Uh, I'm going to have to actually end.